Okay, now you guys can hear me, right? You should be able to hear me. So, once you join, please say... This is how big my computer screen is, that if you see me looking around like this, it's because I'm looking at my computer screen. So, um, please let me know quickly if you can hear me or not. Um, so, can you hear me? Can you not hear me? Just let me know. Is this a test again? Well, if, if I pass the test, this is the real thing. So let's just let me know first, can you hear me? A yes, I can hear you, or a no, I can't hear you would be the clearest. There we go. So yes. Okay, great. So you guys can hear me. Um, okay, great. So I uh, am going to go ahead and um, bring my guest on the screen. Here we go. So give me one second. I can hear you. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Great. So here we go. So I'm going to add to the chat and uh, that should all be working well. I've got my coffee. I've got my water and uh, and I've got my guest. So I have I have I guess you could say I have it all. Hey, Darren, welcome. And Darren, you can hear me all right. Yeah. Now I can, yes, hello. Now you can. Don't bring up the past, Darren, I swear. Uh, and, uh, and you guys can hear Darren okay, yeah? Hello, hi. If you guys can't hear him or can't hear me, let me know. Um, I'm going to scoot back a little bit, because when you do um, video chat on Instagram, it only shows half of your screen, so often what ends up happening is people just see one half of my face. Um, all right, good. So... Just waiting for one last thing, hoping you guys can say, yes, I can hear you, or all hearing good. Okay, great. So we'll go ahead and uh, jump in. We're going to try to keep this to a half an hour, because I know Darren's battery, he's projecting that he's got about 30 minutes of battery. Um, I am plugged in, but who knows? The night is young. Anything could happen. So um, welcome, everyone. Um, welcome, Darren. Um, I'm just going to start by giving people some context about like what it is that we're talking about. Um, hi, we can hear you. Good. I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. So some context about what we're talking about. So for those of you who most of these people are probably my followers, so people probably know who I am. Um, I'm Ben Strothman, but I'm also Honey LeBronx, the vegan drag queen. Um, and uh, what we're talking about today is uh, I had a post recently on my Instagram. I was sharing a picture of a fellow drag queen. Um, and Darren, uh, he is uh, Instagram handle um, peace. I always want to say like peace, love, happiness, but it's not that. It's peace, kindness, hope. Um, and he, of course, commented with some negative comments. And obviously, I felt some sort of way about that. And I had all sorts of things I was going to respond with, like, well, blah, 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 blah. Um, but then I kind of stopped for a moment and I asked myself, like, well, what is that going to accomplish? You know, if this guy feels this way and I feel this way, then what am I going to accomplish by just getting angry and, you know, shouting at him on the Internet, especially when I have like dozens of people also on my side? It, I just don't feel like that's going to um, accomplish anything for him. So I reached out to Darren uh, and I said, hey, rather than having just like a comment war back and forth, which would be really, really easy to do for both of us. I said, why don't we just talk it out? And I invited him to um, come on this Instagram live with me and actually just have an open discussion about it. And look who accepted. He's here. And he so I automatically think that, um, you know, our differences aside, uh, Darren, I want to acknowledge you for that. I think that's really big of you, and I'm really glad. There's nowhere else I'd rather have you be than here with us, like, ready to talk about this. Sure. Um, so, Darren, do you, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and just let people know who you are, where you're from, and uh, et cetera. Yes, uh, I'm Darren Pajak. I'm 24 years old, and I'm from Manitoba, Canada, um, and I'm just uh, – the reason, uh, the reason that I've ran into Ben is that you know I, I'm using social media a lot, and um, I, I I found a post of Ben's that I didn't really necessarily like, so I uh, kind of um, got a little over my head and uh, started saying some uh, what I would consider uh, aggressive and mean and rude things. Uh, so that's why uh, I thought maybe it would be good that we uh, came and uh, talked about this because maybe it would be a good idea that he could maybe see where I come from and maybe as someone who's taking offense to anything that they do, maybe it would be uh, be uh, good for him to maybe understand, like, you know, 
what kind of person I am, you know, so I, I, I'm open to uh, this discussion. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it goes well. And um, I think, uh, I think I'll let uh, ben, ben start with uh, whatever he'd like to say. Sure. Uh, well, thank you. And thank you for, uh, for what you said. And I kind of feel like I did start with what I wanted to say. Um, I think like the perfect uh, start to this would kind of be just to give you um, an opportunity to say whatever there is you'd like to say. Sure. Um, or just whatever points you want to start off with. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, you know, my, my initial comment, I believe, um, was that why, you know, I, I, I believe I exactly what I said was that I was upset that, uh, someone who I thought was Ben at the time who had turned out not even being Ben, um, was, was cross dressing. And, uh, to me, you know, to me as someone who's, who's, uh, transphobic, uh, you know, I, I just, I, I automatically, you know, kind of lost my head to that. And I, I, I said some, said some ignorant things. And, uh, what I, what I said was that, you know, why couldn't more lines, more along the lines of why couldn't you be normal? Because no one, no one wanted transgender people or it was, it was a weird thing, or I can't even really remember exactly what I said, but it was, you know, it was, uh, you know, and, you know, could could you maybe remind me? Do you remember exactly what? Yeah, I, actually, I mean, um, I'm I'm here in front of my computer, so I just think for the purpose of um, accuracy, um, uh, I have uh, I have your comments in front of me, and I also think like I just want people to remember like uh, I, I, there's part of me that's I, I just want to start by acknowledging also like I don't know about you, but like I'm nervous, like I'm kind of nervous in this conversation. Sorry, I give off that vibe. What's that? I'm sorry, I give off that vibe. <laughs> Oh no, it's not. It's not coming from you. I guess I'm nervous because, like, I don't necessarily like feel like I'm in control of how this is going to go. Um, we're doing this live, like, in front of people, so this could blow up in my face. It could blow up in your face. Like, we could both come away looking however we are going to look. Um, although, like, lighting wise, like, I think I'm looking on point right now. Like, anyway, my, my but, light um, is very poor, and I, I don't <laughs> fix it. I, As a photographer, I can tell you why that is. It's just because you're backlit. Like, I don't have a lighting source behind me. It's just in front of me. But don't worry about it. I mean, yeah, you, you, you look fine. Um, but, you know, one other thing that I'm a little nervous about in this conversation is I'm not trans. Um, I mean, I'm a drag queen. A lot of people get those things confused. Um, but uh, when I try to educate myself on trans issues or or other issues like other social justice issues or issues that don't affect me directly but affect other marginalized groups um a lot of times i will uh get people responding like i'm not here to teach you it's not my job to teach you i don't i shouldn't have to do the emotional labor and blah, blah, blah. So for me, someone who's trying to be an ally, it can often feel like, well, you're damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. You know, if I don't say something, so much better, so much better lighting. Um, like your hat just went from gray to light blue. <laughs> but um, so I am, there's, I guess I'm just going to get my, my fears out of the way and just name them first. But like one of my fears is people will, will say, why are you giving a platform to somebody who's transphobic to express their views? Like you're only helping further their cause. Um, I don't know that I necessarily agree with that. I can see how in some cases that would be true. Um, like having Kellyanne Conway on to debate about political issues, you know, the Trump presidency, blah, blah, blah. I would agree like CNN, stop booking her as a guest. I don't think that that's the same thing in this situation. Um, also one of my big fears is that if I try to, uh, stand up for the trans community and I do it wrong, or I make a mistake, or I say something that I don't realize is incorrect, um, that there will be backlash where people will be like, you said this, you said that, how dare you? Um, and even though I have those fears, like by default, those fears would normally take over, you know, and they would be in the driver's seat they would be controlling how I act and what I get to do or don't. And I don't want my fears to be running the show. Like I want to have a say in the matter of who I get to be. Um, so I want to be someone who can have those fears and still um, speak up. So I'm just starting by saying that I'm nervous. 
Um, as for your comments, your comment, um, and listen, it's understandable that you were offended by a picture of Faye Ludes on Instagram. She really is horrible and disgusting and offensive in every way. Um, so I agree with you there. Um, but your comment said, um, since when did not being able to tell if you are male or female become a trend? Why can't people just be normal? We face fishless oceans by 2048. And here in, and here we are dressing like clowns slash the opposite sex. Um, in a way, I don't have an, an issue with any of that because I'm like, we are definitely dressing like clowns. That is a thousand percent correct. And yes, we do face fishless, fishless oceans. And I wish more people cared about that. Um, and I would also agree that I'm probably definitely not what people would consider normal and etc. When it became a trend, I would say thousands of years BC, like this isn't really anything new. Drag has kind of always been a part of popular culture back in the days of Shakespeare. Women were not allowed to be actors, so men played all the women's blah, 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 blah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, so that was the comment. So I, I'm going to turn it back to you if there's anything you want to say about that comment or better explain like where you were coming from when you made that comment. Yeah, I guess, um, you know, I guess I'm just someone who's, uh, you know, upset with the trans community because as I, of course, am someone who's, you know, not part of the LGBTQ community. So it's, it's, it's very difficult for me to, you know, to agree or to uh, feel okay with something that maybe I'm not necessarily part of. I, you know, for, for you guys, you guys are really, you guys are part of the community. You guys have accepted this a long time ago. This is, you know, coming from someone who's, you know, raised as a heterosexual and who is heterosexual. Uh, it, you know, it, it's, it's very different for us to see it that way. You know, everything that you guys see that your lifestyle that you have, uh, you know, um, everything that you do, you know, you've, you've, you've based this beyond your beliefs for many years, right? This is something that you guys believe in, right? So it, it's very, it's very difficult for me um, as an outsider, so to say, to really accept you guys. And I, I, I'm sure the first thing that comes to your head is, you know, it shouldn't be, you know, it, it shouldn't be like that. You know, I, sh I shouldn't have a problem, but honestly, I do. Uh, like whether I would like to or not, I am, I do have a sense of nervousness when it comes to people that are transgender and that 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 isn't because of so, like being naturally born that way it's just because like that is a learned behavior a behavior that i've learned over a matter of years over a matter of time where things have happened and experiences that i've had i've learned to have this belief and have this opinion right so that's because that's how someone like you and i could be maybe perhaps different uh mm -hmm. with our opinions you know like i i when it comes to um, my sexuality is of course a lot different than, you know, you guys or someone who's transgender, like if, yeah, if you'd agree, of course. So, you know, so for me, like my, my biggest problem, uh, my biggest problem that bothers me, and I'm not necessarily saying this is something that they're doing wrong because it's, it's in no way my way to tell them that. So of course, if I said something that was maybe a little bit, uh, maybe I said something that didn't necessarily work for me because, um, you know, it was the wrong way to go about it. But uh, the reason that I could come to saying something like that is because like I've, I've had these experiences in my life and, you know, it, my, my problem is like, I, I see a society of people that, uh, that is growing very rapidly. Like the human population is, you know, 6 billion people and uh, we're just growing, you know, with, with uh, in my opinion, we have such bad socialization. Um, and I, I, I think that, you know, this, this community of people, I think that they're, you know, not necessarily the healthiest group of people. Now, I, I wouldn't, I would say that, uh, I, I would say a, lor a large majority of these people are in some way, you know, are, are, are some way having some sort of either uh, domesticated issues in their life or they're in some way, you know, challenged by, by something. And, you know, there's a lot of people and I, I understand that there is a, there is a, there is a very large majority of people that are truly uh, transgender. And there's, there's a large majority of people that are 
transgender because they've learned this behavior, you know, and, and, and then they, they see it as kind of a trendy thing. And then they're, they're kind of jumping along for the ride because it's exciting and it's new for them. And the reason that I say that is because I actually, in my life, I've met people that are transgender. I actually do have uh, a few transgender friends, uh, one in which I worked with for a very long time who was transgender. And, you know, they, they told me about the struggles that they had and uh, not necessarily that it's my place to get into their their business or anything but you know there mm -hmm. there was a lot of things that these people or one of them specifically told me that you know maybe they were doing it just because it was say for example a phase and you know this person was you know transgender or believed they were trans for a number of years and then they told me uh, after they decided that they weren't and that they had changed their mind and it was something they were just going through. So I do know for a fact there is a majority of people that are kind of just, you know, trending and, and following the momentum wave of the trans trans movement, you know. So, like, for me as an outsider, it's easy for me to see what I would consider, in my own opinion, a negative side of, of the LGBTQ community because, you know, there's there's just, like, you know, there's just so many there's so there's so much socialization in this world and you know we have children and the, the, the these children they are specifically you know these children they have you know they, they've got social media they've got tv they've got all sorts of ways where they can learn these behaviors and you know I just, I, I, I don't necessarily think, and not just because I, I blame this on the trans community, but for a variety of reasons, I believe that we are not teaching our children uh, the most appropriate things. Like, I, I believe personally that I wouldn't want my children to be raised or taught about trans or LGBTQ, and that's my belief. And, you know, I just that's just some that's just how I feel about it and it, so it's very hard for me coming from a world that I live in to to you know kind of agree and understand uh, a, a community like like uh, transgender um, yeah. uh, another another thing that bothered me as well is that you know as you know as I learned more and I researched more I I found a lot of articles that spoke about uh, animal products being used in, in the trans drugs of the trans people. And now I also heard lots of articles that contradicted that. Um, I heard actually lots of information, but one thing that seemed to be very common was the speak of uh, animal hormones or animal-based uh, hormones uh, being used to intergo the, the sex change. And, you know, I, I just, I kind of thought that, you know, it was, it was contradictory because, you know, someone that claims that they would be, you know, for, for an animal liberation, um, you know, and at the same time using an, using an animal product to do something like change their sex. Now, I understand a lot of people need sex changes, and it's something that actually does uh, really exist, that people at times uh, actually need a sex change. Um, but I mean for the amount of community that are doing it just to kind of fit in that don't necessarily need this. Like I would say there's lots of people that, that are doing that, that, that are having needless sex changes. Now I'm not saying that all trans people have a needless sex change because some trans people are born that way and they're hundred percent transsexual and they have to have that sex change and that is a necessity for them. Um, but at the same time, there are, there is a population of people like if, if we're talking about 8 billion people, and 2% of the human population or 1% of the human population is transgender, that's, that's, something like, uh, that's something like 90 million people in the world are transgender. And that means like out of 100 people, one to two people and 100 would be, tr uh, would be transgender. So mm -hmm. if, if say for example, there's, there's a real trans community and I, I, I'm not necessarily, I honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I don't think the trans community, the real trans community of actual trans uh, gender people, I don't think that they are doing anything wrong because they're born that way. Why should they be shamed for who they are? They shouldn't. Right. But I just, I, I, from, from an outsider, I'm able to see how there's so many people that might just be doing this because it's part of socialization to them. 
-hmm. and, and, and I have lived myself and met people that have agreed that they have been part of this community because of just strictly because of socialization. And I, I, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't mean to, you know, say that it's necessarily wrong for what they're doing, but at the same time, if they are having these sex changes, and at that point, it's a needless thing for them. If it's something that they're doing strictly through socialization, uh, right. there, there is there is actual factors that point towards animal pro animals being abused and animal products being used to alter alter the sex. So, for for me, who's someone I I I'm against the exploitation of animals. I'm someone who's uh, you know I, I've been vegan for four years. Um, and I, I, I don't I don't really agree with any form of exploitation. And then when I heard about that, I kind of became, you know, very judgmental. Um, I'm sorry if people are trying to type things to me. I didn't really have time to read anything here. Yeah, I mean, comment. I mean, we, we can I, I don't know that we'll have a chance to, like, really incorporate sure. all the comments. But I think yeah. that's more for other people to see. Yeah, but, but keep going. You're, uh, and I, I do want to jump in. In, in a minute, so um, uh, make make your make your other point, and then I'll, and then I'm going to jump in if I may. Yeah, you know what? Um, yeah, so to me, just like to re kind of recap here, it's just you know like it, it to to me like I, I've I've personally just been someone who's who's naturally through whatever reasons that I won't even get into, I've I've became someone who actually does have a real fear of these transgender people, and I I, I would actually admit that. Uh, I do have reoccurring dreams of being um, attacked or assaulted by um, not necessarily always a transsexual, but sometimes a gay man. And I have these dreams because I truly am transphobic. I truly am, uh, have a natural fear of these people. So like, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, it's very hard for me to, you know, it's very hard for me to look at it the same way as they look at it, you know? So, um, mm -hmm. it's just, uh, it's just very difficult for someone like me, um, you know, to really, to really see, see it in a good way. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just, a, that's just really how it is. I mean, there's a, a whole bunch of stuff that I could say, uh, further, but, you know, really just like, I just, I just have to admit that I, I am someone like that. So in, in your opinion, like, I guess I'd like to hear, you know, hear maybe how that, how that makes you feel or, or, or you could, uh, you have something to say now. Um, I've been talking for a while. I see that. Sure. Sure. Hey, I'm, uh, Darren and I spoke yesterday just to kind of like clear all like the hostility and stuff out of the way so that that wouldn't really be in the space today. And like, we both discovered that we are talkers and we will like over explain. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I appreciate what you, I appreciate what you said. Yeah. Uh, I think Darren disagrees that I call it over explaining because he's like, I, I love to hear it over you know, explained every way till Tuesday or if that's the expression. Um, I want to, uh, first to start by saying I don't want people, uh, to miss, to mistake my patience with you in this argument for agreement. Um, I, you know, it's not my, it's not, I, I don't wake up in the morning automatically patient, automatically compassionate and understanding. Um, that takes work. And there is an, ex to, to a certain extent, I am exerting like conscious effort to be patient with what you're saying and to be compassionate with, hey, whether I like it or not, I'm talking so much with my hands, but you can't, you guys can't see it. <laughs> so, um, to be compassionate with like, Hey, whether or not I agree, this is how this guy feels. This is how he feels. I can't change how he feels. Uh, but if I want to do anything about it, the first thing I can do is find out more about where he's coming from and then like meet him there. You know, you might be over in the woods somewhere. And if you and I want to go on any kind of journey together, like I'm, I may have to come over and get you and be like, where are you at? Let me come find you. Great. We'll walk the rest of the way together so to speak. Um, so yes, you've said a lot that I definitely don't agree with. Um, you've said a lot that I, that strikes me as like, well, that's factually wrong or possibly even contradictory to other things that you've said. Um, but I, it's also not my intention in this conversation. And this isn't just for, for Darren. This is just for everyone watching as well. It's not my intention to take this person and change his mind about something. 
Um, think about it this way. If I simply tell this guy you're wrong and, all right, well, you said this and this and this. Well, those facts don't line up. I don't think that's automatically going to translate to you not having nightmares where you're being attacked, right? I don't think that's automatically going to lead to you just being like, oh, my God, all right, cool. I didn't know I was wrong. Awesome. Where can I come see your drag show, you know? I don't think me changing your mind as if that's possible for one human to do to another, I don't think that's what's going to be most valuable in this interaction. I think, and I might be wrong, but I'm, I'm willing to try something new. Like, this is me just not, like, fighting back in the comments. This is me trying something other than what my first instinct would normally be. Um, and I'll find out if this was productive or not. But I have a feeling that we'll get a lot more bang for our buck if I try to create like a hostility free environment where you and I can like just freely exchange ideas without like getting attached to the person on the other side, but just being with what that person's saying. Um, with that said, I also would like to invite everyone listening. I know that this won't be easy for everyone to do, and I'm not making you wrong. If you do, if you have feelings some sort of way about this, I mean, by all, by all means, feel them. You know, you're entitled to. But I would love to challenge everyone to take this opportunity in this conversation to like step it up just a little bit from where your comfort zone is. Like if it would be really easy to like make Darren the bad guy and me the good guy um, and to make him wrong and me right and blah, blah, blah. That would be really easy. And it would be really easy to listen to Darren from a point of view of like, oh, well, this guy, my God, he's wrong. He's wrong. He's wrong. Um, I mean, and meanwhile, on Darren's side of the argument, he's not seeing it that way necessarily. Right. So like who's to say where the truth is? Um what I would like to see possible is that everyone takes this conversation as an opportunity to practice compassion. As I say uh, often, compassion is unilateral. To, to have compassion, compassion doesn't discriminate. If you have compassion for the animals, but then you don't have compassion for Trump voters, or you have compassion for the animals, but you don't have compassion for someone who's homophobic, well, that's not compassion. That's just tribalness, you know? That's just siding with your own team or favoritism. So if I'm really about compassion, then I need to learn, like, how can I have compassion for this guy? Um, I just have a feeling I'm going to get more out of that and more will be possible in this conversation between us. So having said that, um, there's a few things I want to say to the points that you made. Um, one, uh, I'm actually surprised to hear that you do have um, a trans friend um, I'm, or, or multiple trans friends. And yes, you... It sounds like you know someone who is trans who said for themselves that they kind of went along with it because it was the they thought it was trendy or etc. Um, you know what? I also know a trans person. They've got a one man show or a book. I forget which, but it's like the book about like the like the boy who became um, like from how does he say it like from boyhood to manhood or from from boyhood to girlhood to womanhood to manhood see he's someone who was born a cisgender male assigned male at birth um felt he was transgender he transitioned lived his life as female grew up as a trans woman and now and i think he's in his 60s he has evolved to like, hmm, you know what? I don't feel trans anymore. Maybe I did at the time. That no longer feels like who I am. And now he's living his life as a man. Um, so I'm not going to say that that's not also possible. Um, there's people out there who have that experience. What I do want to, uh, to, to, uh, I don't, I, I don't want to call it a correction, but you did say something along the lines of like, many trans people or most trans people, the way that you worded it came across as most trans people aren't really trans, but they're kind of going along with it because it's a fad or it's a trend or etc. So I want, I just want to point out that like um, you're making a claim that I would assert you can't really back up from your personal experience because you're sort of basing it on this one person that you know. 
Um, and look, if you let's say for argument's sake, what just happened? Oh, my computer light went off. I thought all the lights went off. <laughs> let's say that you only know two trans people and one of them no longer identifies as trans. Well, then by that math, you would be like, well, 50 percent of all the trans people I know uh, aren't really trans. Right. Mm -hmm. I can see how your experience might lead you to to believe that. The other thing that I want to say, and there's so many different points I could make here and so many different directions I could take this. But one thing I want to say is, why would it matter if, uh, you know, it's kind of like when people say, well, homosexuality is a choice. I'm like, if it was a choice, then I must have chose it when I was two, because I do not remember a moment in my life where I was not thirsty for eggplant. Um, as, as early as being three years old, I remember having having the thirst. Um, so, like, I've from the minute that I had language, I always knew that I was a gay person. There wasn't a moment where I had to choose it. It was kind of just always there. Um, but when people try to say homosexuality is a choice, I know that we're not talking about homosexuality right now, but when people try to use the argument that it's a choice, it's a choice, it's not a choice. It's just not. It's just not. Um, and yet, if it was a choice, what does it matter that it's a choice? It's my choice. If it were a choice, which it's not. But if it were a choice, then like, okay, well, I should be free to choose what I want to do, who I want to be. Um, if, if being trans is possibly a choice, I'm not saying it is. I don't believe it is. Um, in fact, I would assert it is absolutely not a choice. But, um, if there were people who were influenced by a trend and decided to play with their gender expression, I guess the question I want to pose to you is, why is that a problem? Well, I just, um, you know, I guess what I, where I come from is that we have, you know, we have this community of people. And of course, you know, where I came from is obviously going to be different from how you grew up. But I mean, I just, I think that our children, as I, as I grew up as a child, I felt like we really lacked proper proper structure in our childhood we we lacked proper you know role models we learned proper i mean uh we we lacked proper you know socialization i i, I would say and when and there's just so many there's just so many people at young age and like children like you know getting involved i i would certainly say that people you know try to target this community and kind of shame them in that way and kind of make it seem worse than it is i would say but at the mm -hmm. same time you know when 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 there is certain things that are happening with with that community it, it and and the, the number of these people are are growing to me like it just kind of like it just kind of looks like our society is maybe going in a direction that maybe not be the brightest and best future for for our children and for for our community and i i i would i, I would just necessarily think that i i i would i wouldn't blame these people individually for who they are for for you know the way society is but i mean just like there's just like there's just such a such a broadcast of these kind of lifestyles and it just leaves such kind of it, you know all these all these different you know options for children like i mean children of course should have options they should be free to be whoever they want but i mean like it's it's you know it to me what how i see it there is you know there if you took like in my opinion and this is how i believe i believe if you took children and you you know grew them up in the uh himalayan mountains or something away from people i would say that you statistically would have less people growing up to be trans and and part of this community because you know i i think i think a lot of people just you know they kind of just they're born and through a variety of different reasons they've they've, they've became that kind of person through through a number of years and you know I just like I, I I think, you know I, I I just think like all these you know all these uh, you know I like all these examples that we have for children like we have examples on TV we have examples on social media uh, like you know um uh, if I if I'm able to find you know things about you know transgender on the internet you know what's what's stopping you know a younger child from accessing this kind of information on the internet and i'm not necessarily saying it's a bad thing and of course it's not a bad thing for them to find this information but i mean like i i just i just i just think when it's you know in front of the public eye it's something that maybe 
shouldn't necessarily be be there to, for them to even to even see. Mm -hmm. And I, I know a lot of people would would wonder, like, how, how could you be like that? Um, I, I, I just want to try take a take one moment to answer answer some questions. I, I seen some people ask sure, some specific sure. questions here uh, that I wanted to yeah. answer. Um, OK, and then after that, I kind of want to jump in because I have a point to make to your point. But uh, yeah, go ahead and pick a few questions. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people said there's you know there's all sorts of there's all sorts of drugs, uh, you know like like uh, uh, drugs for uh, diabetes and uh, people take mm -hmm. insulin and stuff like that, B12 supplements, all sorts of other uh, things that other humans take that do contain animal product uh, drugs too. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not necessarily saying that I'm someone who, uh, you know, I, I, I'm I'm someone who always could live 100% uh, cruelty free myself. So like, I, 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 under, I understand, uh, I understand how people like, you know, they, they, you know, they, they would say, you know, like, are you against all that too? Well, sure, I guess in a way, but with the trans community, it's a little bit more because to me, I don't think that the trans community is just like, it's not just about the, the little traces of animal products that could possibly be in someone's trans drugs. It's not necessarily that. That is just kind of one thing that I would kind of mention about about why it bothers me. Really, why why it bothers me is just like what society is turning into. And, you know, I a lot of people would argue, you know, like, you know, like, how could you say that about a community? But I'm not necessarily saying that about a community of people. I'm just saying as a whole, our our uh, generations, our future generations, our society is really turning really downhill. I mean, like for, for a variety of reasons, Earth, I'd say as a whole is like failing. Socially, Earth is failing, I would say. Would you, would you agree uh, for oh, a variety um, yeah. of reasons? I, I feel that's an entirely different conversation. But yeah, you have my agreement on that conversation. Uh, the, the why and wherefore, I mean, that's another matter. But yeah, uh, are we failing the Earth? Sure. Um, yeah. I do feel it's a different issue, um, uh, but uh, and I can see how you might want to make a connection to that. But if I could use this opportunity to respond just to a few things, um, you talk about uh, raising children in the Himalayas, which is just never how I envisioned my future. Uh, I mean, I'm an uncle nine times, but one of the things I love about my nieces and nephews is at the end of the day, they go home to my brothers and my sisters. Um, I've threatened, I'm like, if I ever have to watch your kids, they're getting Red Bull and tap shoes like 10 minutes before I give them back to you. Uh, I'm kidding. I love them. They're fun. Um, but I don't know how aware you are of this, but like before Western civilization, you know, before colonization, um, I mean, it, it, it's, it's a whole other issue. Like, what do we call the indigenous people uh, who were here before we colonized what we now call North America? Um, I prefer to call them First Nations people. I have a sister who we, she, she had a different dad than mine. Um, she prefers to call herself Native American or Indian. Um, I don't embrace those terms as much because I'm like, India is that way. Not Anyway, um, but in Native American culture, like they recognized way more than two genders. To them, it was not as cut and dry as you are either male or you are female. Native Americans recognized, and by and, and of course, these were people who did not have TV. They didn't have podcasts. Um, I'm not sure about CNN. Um, they did not have newspapers. You know, there was no social media. There was no mass communication. There was no, you know, reality TV, Kardashian. They weren't influenced by anything other than family, tribal values, etc. And yet people who recognized themselves as being something other than male or female, they referred to it as two spirit. Um, those people were held up. They were revered. In fact, there's, I, I'm going to get my facts all sorts of wrong on this, whether this was the Native Americans or this was certain like African cultures or whatever. Um, in, in a lot of, um, uh, in a lot of cultures, funerals were like only, only a, what we would call transgender person was allowed to preside over a funeral. They were the only person who was allowed to like, 
prepare the dead for burial, like say the prayers for burial, orchestrate the funeral. That was like their special job. Um, gay people in the same way by many cultures have been revered as, I don't know why they call us this, but like the gatekeepers, like the welcomers to this plane of existence. I mean, we throw great parties and we can be very welcome. And maybe that's why I don't know. But I would argue that like before Western civilization, before white man colonization took over this place, we didn't have the problem of, oh, my God, our kids are getting all the wrong ideas. Our kids are getting mixed messages. Our kids are growing up with all these perverted notions imposed on them of how they should be. We didn't have any of that. And we had transgender people living among us. And it was welcomed, and there were no problems. These people like were allowed to live out their lives as whoever they felt that they were. It wasn't a problem. So when I'm hearing today that be, that that being trans is a problem, and often it, it, you know it makes me a little upset when I hear people using the children, the children as like the reason why this should matter. But I think, well, I was a child, like this isn't, we're not talking about homosexuality here, but these are the same arguments so often that are made against me as a gay person that, oh, I'm not really this way. I was led to believe I'm this way. Um, I'm not really this way. This is a choice I made, blah, blah, blah. And people always talk about family values. I'm like, well, my family has a gay person in it. You know, my family has a gay uncle and a gay cousin and a gay me. What about our family values? You know, like what if something's not, oh, it's not family friendly. Well, what does that mean? Because my family includes a gay person. Most families include a gay person somewhere. So when we talk about things as family friendly or family values, or especially talking about, you know, the question that I asked you was, why is this a problem? And really, I didn't really get like a concrete answer. I didn't get like, well, Ben, I'm glad you asked that. Here are the problems I see with this societally. I just kind of heard a vague notion of like, yeah, but the children, the children, the children. I know a lot of children who are trans. I know a lot of children who, when they were, you know, a, a friend of mine, I mean, I'm not going to name names because it's not my place to share their experience, but I have a friend in Iceland. You know, when I met her daughter in 2012, she was this bright young little girl who was 11. I come back four years later and this little girl is now her little boy. And the first thing she says when she runs up to give me a hug is, guess what? I'm trans. And yeah, if I were a parent and I had a kid and I was pretty sure they were female. And then one day they're like, guess what, dad? I'm really a boy. I can see what that might be hard for me. Um, I'll get back to that in a minute. I, I, one thing I meant, I meant to start off this whole conversation with is, I don't assume people should have a built-in automatic comfort level with this issue from from the from day one. I get that it's uncomfortable for people. Gender is very uncomfortable for us in Western society. I would love to come back to that in a minute. But you know, yeah, there was the part of me at first that I go through all those questions too, like, well, is this kid really trans? Or is this kid, you know, going through a phase or blah, 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 like as if any of that's my business. If this kid wants to say, hey, with the life I was given, this is who I feel I am. This is who I say I am for myself. And if that's what makes this kid happy, then so be it. Um, and, you know, gosh, all of that was like, you know, two, three years ago that I met uh, this, this, this young man now through his transition. He's now 16, going on 17 getting ready to learn to drive, getting ready to hold down a job and blah, blah, blah. And this kid is like incredibly well adjusted. This kid is starting to date. This kid is doing well in school. This kid is a help around the house. Um, this isn't some kid who I'm seeing that being trans is causing problems in their life. Uh, what I could see as being a problem is this kid coming home to parents who aren't accepting or parents who are like, that is not my vision for you, you don't get to be that. I can see that as being much, much more of a problem um, than a kid just coming out as trans when they're young. Believe me, I knew when I was five years old that I was gay. Like, I, the jury was not out. Uh, I knew I liked boys. I knew I liked them a whole lot. You know, that I, I trust people when they say, when people tell me who they are, I believe them. Um, I think also one of the arguments that's often made is like, yeah, but what if, you know, this kid transitions and blah, 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 you know, 
that's up to the, that's up to the kid. Now uh, they're, I'm, I'm a little bit losing my train of thought because a, I'm keeping my eye on time and I know that we've already gone a bit over time and B there's something else I wanted to go back and say, um, you started by this conversation by like apologizing for being transphobic. I want to tell you, this is going to be like a shocker for everyone who hears me say that so who, for everyone who hears me say this, um, you don't owe a, an apology for being transphobic. You and I were born in a world that is transphobic. We were born in a world that is racist. We were born in a world that is homophobic. We were born in a world that is sexist. As much as I want to say like seven or eight years ago, I remember hearing myself say, oh, well, I can't be sexist because I'm gay. And then I heard myself say that and I thought, what? I just had this thought. I thought, what if that's not true? And I, because I was asking myself, well, what if that's not true? What if I actually am sexist and I don't know it? Because I asked myself that question, I was able to start seeing examples of sexism that I never noticed before. And a lot of them came from me. I had my own thoughts and opinions about how women should be and gender roles and all of that. So I tell people that, yes, I am absolutely racist. I am homophobic. I am sexist. I am transphobic. I am all of those things. The day I start trying to act like I'm not those things, I, uh, and Vegan Reiki Angel is saying cis people do owe trans people an apology for transphobia. I would actually disagree with that. I am a cis person. I am transphobic. Um, what I mean when I say I'm transphobic is when I first ever heard the idea of someone being transgender, which of course was not the term for it when I first heard about it, and obviously the way that it was presented to me the first time I ever heard about it was not positive and empowering. Um, when I first heard it as something that was new and I'd never heard of, yes, it may be uncomfortable because it's not what I grew up with. It's not what I was raised with. Um, I often tell people this, you know, when people say, when pe people are like shocked when I say that I'm homophobic, they're like, how could you be homophobic? You're gay. I'll put it this way. If my mother, who is now 70, 70, how is my mom 70? If my mom at 70 years of age came to me and told me, you know what, Ben, I've never told you this before, but I'm a lesbian. I've known her for about 10 years now. I don't know why. I don't know why it matters. Something about that would be uncomfortable for me. Something about that I would be uncomfortable with. Uh, I want to comment just because Vegan Reiki Angel is addressing me directly. He says, we're all responsible for our actions and feelings despite how we grew up. I agree with that in part. And here is the part. You are not responsible for your first thought. Your first thought is the result of the programming and conditioning that you were raised with. You didn't get to choose how you were raised or the society you grew up in. What you are responsible for is the thought that follows that, right? If I, you know, I, I, I had a gig, you know, I, I perform, I tour with my drag show. I had a, a show recently and there was someone at the show who was a trans woman. And I'm not saying Laverne Cox, you know, I'm not saying someone who is unclockable and is passable. It's someone who was not passable as a cis woman. And there is something that when I first saw it, I had a discomfort with it. When I first saw it, I had a reaction to it. Instead of that taking me days to address or days to get my head around, over time, that little window of discomfort becomes less and less and less and less, where to, today it gets to the point that it's maybe a couple of seconds where I'm like, Oh, that's on you. Oh, you know what? How wonderful that they feel welcome at my show. How wonderful they have a place to come where they can be themselves and let, you know. So I don't, I don't think that we are responsible for our first thought and for our, our conditioning, which will almost always be transphobic because currently that's the world that we're brought up and raised in. What we are responsible for is how we interact with that thought when it arises. If we listen to that thought like that's the truth and we don't challenge that thought, then that's on us. Um, but so what I'm saying is if you have an actual discomfort with, with trans, with it, trans issues, with gender issues, I get it. I understand. Uh, gender messes with a lot of people. The idea of sex and sexuality messes with a lot of people. 
Um, what I would hold you to is having, having noticed that thought, having noticed that feeling, how do you respond to that? That is where I think your personal responsibility comes in. Um, so I say that because very often when even I, who, if I'm trying to stand up for the trans community or, or help someone better understand trans issues, uh, to the best of my ability, very often, if I say something or misgender someone or say the wrong thing, very often people respond with like, that's transphobic. And I really don't love hearing that because when I hear that, I want to be like, well, of course it's transphobic. That is me doing the best I can. And it may come out transphobic because that's, that is the environment I was raised in. And clearly some of that programming is still there. So rather than just lobbing at me that I'm transphobic, like that's means I'm a bad person. And not that I'm taking it as that's what it means, but you get what I'm saying, I hope. Rather than someone just telling me, that's transphobic, that doesn't really tell me how I can do better. Instead, I would rather that someone say, hey, the thing that you just said, here is how I feel that could, that could hurt people. Here is how I feel that could be an issue for people. And here's where I take issue with that. And offer me a better way to see it. Offer me a better way to say it, and so forth. Um, there is one more um, issue I want to go into, but I want to check in with you for some time and check in with you to see if you have anything you want to you want to say to that. Um, I should be okay. Uh, I can't exactly okay. see my phone battery for some reason. I'm not sure how I can minimize the full screen. I've already tried, but I should be okay. I actually I'll, I'll okay. plug my phone in right now just in case. So if you could, that would be great. Yeah, because <laughs> I don't want to lose you. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, yeah, if you this would be an awkward point in the conversation to lose you. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to say is, so I keep, and this is really kind of like the meat of what I think we need to discuss here. That's really kind of in the way of, of, um, of how you're receiving these issues. Um, you are sideways at this point. Yeah. Um, but, uh, there we go. I, I, thought, I was <laughs> um, to see if maybe it would switch over, but if it would rotate, yeah, yeah no, uh, I think it stays however it is when you first do it. Or I think when you do two people like this, I think it, uh, it, you only get to do it vertically. Right. <laughs> anyway, um, one thing that I, this might seem like a bit of a leap, but I feel like we need to, we need to address this. One thing that you've said, uh, time and again, it's one of your most persistent, um, it's one of your most persistent, uh, comments is that, Trans drugs are made from harvested animal blood. I would like to get you to uh, tell us more. Like, okay, I have some follow up questions on that. Before I before I ask those follow up questions, is there anything else you want to say about that first? Um, well, I guess exactly what I what my point would be on this was that uh, trans drugs do. Some of them, some trans drugs, uh, do have traces of animal products. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the reason that I believe this is true is because I've actually, I've done research about this. I've actually talked to doctors about this. I've asked friends that have had hormone therapy, how they mm -hmm. got it and, and what their experience was. So based on my few, few experiences I have with it, because like I said uh, before, this is only something that I learned about quite recently. Uh, you know, like I, 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 I do, I do see that there is traces of animal products in, in the hormone therapy. And, you know, my, my theory and, and, and what I would, I would say is that, you know, I don't believe that an animal should be sacrificed for something that I would consider is, is needless, you know, like, even though these trans people are born the way that they are, I don't think that it's a necessity for them to, to have to change. I mean, if they're born as someone that feels like they want to change, you know, that, that, that's not something I would be prejudiced to, but they're, they're, be, they're born to people that want to do something that I, I just don't think, like, I don't think it's a necessity for them. Yes, they would feel much better and be way more comfortable with it, but I, I, I feel like it's something that's, you know, cosmetic. I feel like it's something that's not actually like, you know, I, I, I wouldn't even justify people eating animal products because it's not a necessity. There are other options, you know, like if you had an option not to kill animals, why wouldn't you do it? Uh -huh. And, you know, if, gotcha. and, and I just, I think for something, for something, especially like a sex change, I mean, I'm not a trans, uh, uh, transgender person so I don't know anything about the the pain and the difficulty 
and the struggle that it would be like to be a transgender person and what what kind of pressure they would have to to do something but i mean i just i think the i think the issue itself is unethical if there was you know if there was uh a completely vegan way to do this, I'm sure I wouldn't have a problem with it. You know, like I, I do have several things that do bother me, but you know, like, it's just like, uh, I just, uh, I don't think, um, you know, like I, I, I just don't think a lot of people are aware that, you know, to, to have the hormone therapy that, that, that there is, uh, you know, uh, animal blood that they are consuming to, to have this therapy, gotcha. you know, Okay. I, I find it very important to say that like my patience with what you're saying and my saying, mm -hmm, uh -huh, okay, is, is not me agreeing. <laughs> I, I, I do disagree with, with most of what you've said. Um, but it helps me see where you're coming from with the argument that you're making. Is it all right if I uh, interrupt here to respond sure. to what you've said so far? Okay. Um, so um, I don't know that there is the time for us to go into like what your sources are, where you heard that from, et cetera, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, when you say, let's start with when you say trans drugs, what, what do you mean by that? Well, um, for, for one example, uh, my, my friend that I worked with, uh, I worked at a fast food restaurant and someone there happened to be uh, acknowledged uh, themselves as a member of the trans community who had gone from female to male um and you know i uh th this person told me that they had to uh implant certain parts you know cert there had to be certain hairs in his in his body that he implanted that came from animals specifically they were animal hairs implanted and he also mm -hmm. had uh he he also said he undergoed like a lot of many years of like of, of a, a thing called he called hormone therapy and so then like mm -hmm. i've i've done whatever i could for research may it not be completely credible information i i've tried my best to do research and almost everything that i've read uh said that there are traces of animal products in 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 the hormone therapy and uh, it is a process that involves involves animal products. There are animal testing that involves that is involved with, uh, or I, I believe there would be animal testing involved with creating these drugs because this is something that is you know is uh, they'd have to do lots of research to be able to do something like this. Of course, there would be you know there's so I just I, I think uh, I just think it's something that's unethical at, at, at this point and like it's a like we said before, there's such a large, there, there is not that this is a bad thing, um, but there is a large community of LGBT or not LGBTQ, but trans community in LGBTQ, right? Like we said before, it was like a 1% of the human population. So this is, this is a lot of people consuming this, this, what I would consider unethical process. And, you know, gotcha. Is it okay if I jump yeah, in there? You go. there? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I think I completely got what you're saying. Um, again, I'm not agreeing with it, but I'm not unclear like how you formed the opinion. Um, what I do want to quickly ask this this trans friend that you work with at fast food. Um, a is it Taco Bell? B do they still work there? C can they get me a discount? I'm kidding. Um, the person that you worked with at fa the fast food place are, is this a vegan, animal rights minded person? Ah, uh, no, not 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 at all. Right. So I don't find it shocking that this person on some level feels that animals are here for us to do with what we please right uh as a drag queen much of the uh foundation like full coverage foundation that's meant to cover like a beard um contains beeswax right i do my best to find full coverage foundation that doesn't contain beeswax but a lot of other drag queens just use makeup that contains beeswax. Um, a lot of like, I, I, there's a lot of places you can walk by where women can get like eyelash extensions. They use mink hair for that. In fact, they advertise that. That's considered fancy. Like, ooh, it's real mink eyelashes, right? I'm, I'm not shocked that people who eat animals and use animals and exploit animals, I'm not shocked that they would uh, take advantage of cosmetic procedures that are exploitive to animals. I'll start by saying that. What I do want to say is trans drug, there's really, there are no trans drugs. 
when you say trans drugs, I want to interrupt that because that's a misnomer. Um, and if you want to sound, um, I hope this doesn't sound um, uh, disrespectful the way I'm saying it. Of course. But if you want to sound like well researched and you know what you're talking about, you would stop. You it, you'd be better to not call them trans drugs because that just doesn't exist yet. That's not a thing. Um, the two drugs mostly used for transitioning are testosterone and estrogen. And we can talk more about that, but I'm getting a pop-up saying we have 15 seconds remaining before this ends. So I'm going to end this and restart it. I would love for everyone to rejoin. And of course, I'll send you a, a join request so we can pick this up in like 15 seconds, okay? Sure. All right, part two. Realized it would go this long. Actually, I fully did. I fully realized it would probably go this long. Um, so anyway, here we are again. I'm hoping everyone will rejoin. Um, I'm going to give everyone an opportunity to jump back in. God, you know, I turned my air conditioning off because I'm like, it's not that cold outside. It's not that hot outside. Why do I need the air conditioner on? It's like already like 34 degrees. And um, and then I turned the air conditioning off. And now all of a sudden I'm like boiling lava hot and like all kinds of sweaty. Here we go. Uh, all right. And waiting for him to join. And um, here we are. By the way, um, I'm trying to work on getting this like saved so y'all can go back and see it in my timeline. Um, so if you're missing any of this, like hopefully it'll still be up and it'll still be available. Um, so I'm waiting for, uh, Darren to rejoin me. Uh, and in the meantime, while I'm waiting for people to rejoin me, um, I just want to invite people. Like, I know that what we're talking about is emotional and I know that we're all going to feel a certain way about it. And look, like we all might be very, um, aligned in terms of what we think about animal rights and LGBTQ rights, etc. Um, but when you really, you know, uh, okay, I've removed him. Now I'm going to re-add him. And by the way, I want to just acknowledge on his behalf. Oh, it didn't work. Let me try that again. Here he comes. Oh, it's hot in here. I wish I turned the air conditioning on, but there we go. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. I just want to acknowledge by the, are you, are you back? Yeah, sure. Uh, can okay, you guys see me? Yeah, yeah. I also just want to acknowledge, like, every time a technical glitch happens or I hit the time limit, that is another opportunity that Darren could just be like, peace out, I'm out, you know, oops, I guess you lost the connection. He is still choosing to be here in this conversation. And for that, I do want to acknowledge you because that's not something everyone would do. And that alone does deserve just a little bit of credit. So, um, but so what I want to say um, here is my possibly misguided, ignorant, cisgender, non-trans way of maybe explaining to someone who doesn't get it why it's necessary for somebody to present that way. So I see that guy at the bar, right? Not even there, I even said it wrong. It's not a guy, it's a trans woman, but it's a trans woman who is not passing for female. I see that and I think, well, if that were me, why would they, why would they choose to present that way? Because that person looks so much like a man. They're you know, 215 pounds, they're six foot three or however many centimeters, if you use a metric system, it would be easier for them just to put on a flannel and a hoodie and just walk down the street blending in. No one has to know they're trans, right? It kind of seems on some level like that would be easier because then they don't have all this focus and all this attention on them. But then I think about it this way, and Darren, I'll invite you to think about it this way as well. What if someone took you and me right now and said, hey, I need you guys to run to the 24-hour grocery store and get me some this and some that and some that. And uh, they said, all right, here, I'll get you dressed so you can go. And they put on you some like mini mouse looking pink dress with ruffly sleeves and polka dots. And they put the same kind of dress on me and heels and we each had to carry a purse. How are we going to feel going to the store? Like real talk. Uh, sorry. Um, I just had, uh, I couldn't hear you for like the last uh, 10 seconds there. Uh, could you repeat okay. what you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically now, can you still hear me? Cause the, the video froze again. 
Yeah, I'm having trouble okay. uh, right now. I just I, I just moved, and now suddenly it's not uh, working that great. Can you try talking? Uh, okay. Yeah, it's still frozen, but as long as you can hear me, I'll continue with that with that point. So what I was what what you didn't hear that I was saying is if you and I like were both sent to go to the store and go to the grocery store, uh, you know what? Alone, we each were told to go to different grocery stores. Like Darren, I need you to go to the grocery store, and Ben, I need you to go to the hardware store. And we each were sent to that store in public in a big pink polka dot dress with ruffly sleeves and high heel shoes in some pantyhose and a purse. How are you going to feel going out in public like that? Um, well, I guess I'd feel uncomfortable. Yes, like uncomfortable, right? As I would too. I'm a drag queen. But if I have a full face of makeup on, I'm fine going out in public in women's clothes. If I wasn't wearing makeup, like my face looks like this, but I'm leaving the house in a dress, I would feel really weird. Like for me, that's not the same thing. So I can understand how for you, you know, for you and me, that feeling of going out in public in the clothes of a different gender, that is how I imagine it must feel for a trans person who would just continue to dress like the gender they were assigned at birth. So when I see that trans woman who looks like a man, does not pass for female, and I think, God, wouldn't it be easier for that person just to not try to pass as a woman? Well, that person feels so uncomfortable going out in public as a man. They feel so like inauthentic, like this is not who I feel like I am on the inside. And so for those people, it is necessary for them to transition for the sake of their own mental health and well-being. While for some people, the physical transition using gender confirming surgery or whatnot is also physically a necessity for their own safety. Because if they don't blend in and if they look like they might not really have been born a woman, they are subjects to violence. So the, the reason I'm going into the, and I just want to check and see if you're still there with me. Can you still hear yeah, me? Yeah, for sure. Okay, great. The reason I bring all that up is because one of the arguments that you've made um, against trans, you know, trans drugs or trans people is that it's not necessary for them to have those surgeries or it's not necessary for them to take that medication. And I would let you know, like, I'm hoping that that presents you with another point of view that maybe you haven't considered before. Um, well, you know, yes. And, uh, I, I, you know, I, I seem to get very, I seem to get very off track when I, I try to, uh, talk about things. Um, I, I thought before I, I meant to try to describe this, I'll have to say this again, but, you know, I guess it's just, um, I, I, I feel that there is, and, and you, you called me out on it, actually, how it was such an assumption and how I shouldn't have this assumption. So I'll try to correct myself when I say that uh, some people, not that I know a certain percentage, but some, some people of the trans community are doing this for something that is temporary. It's not necessarily something that they needed. Um, and then the um now now we stopped hearing you so now I, your your, your video is still frozen but I, now now i can hear you again can you go back about 10 seconds yeah sorry i believe the last thing i was saying is you know how i have the the what you would say like a mixed belief there or contradictory mm -hmm. um you know because I, I i believe that there is people there is people in the community that truly do need this exchange and i and i understand uh maybe not to the deepest level, but I do acknowledge why some people need to have this exchange, just like you said. Um, and it, it mm -hmm. is a very realistic situation where someone needs this exchange. But I also know for a fact, and I, 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 I doubt a lot of people could disagree with me when I say there are people that are doing this just because it's trendy, just because it's an easy way for them to fit in and find acceptance. And they're doing this because it's a learned behavior. And in that case, it is something that's needless. Um, so... I don't know that I'd agree with you there. I, I, I mean, honestly, like, and even if you can say that you know a person or two or ten who who fit that description, I'm going to tell you, I know a lot of trans people. That is so rare. 
And I would, I would even assert that a lot of them are just saying it because it sounds better than taking ownership for like, yeah, this really is who I am. And lastly, I would say, I don't see how it's any of your business or how it affects you, whether or not they choose to transition or whether or not they transition temporarily or how, you know, and a lot of trans people don't feel the need to transition. I knew a trans, no, a trans woman who like didn't get her boobs done for the longest time because she's like, once I started taking hormones, I got more than enough. And then finally, of course, she decided, nah, I'm a, I'm a woman of a certain age. I'm going to have my boobs done. But like trans people don't owe it. To, this is sort of totally an aside from the point that I was making, but trans people don't owe it to us to pass. Trans people don't owe it to us to make us feel comfortable about their gender presentation. Like I, I, I'm, I'm honest in saying, look, the first time I discovered the idea of transgender people, yes, I had a certain level of discomfort with it. On some level, I still do because that's I was. It's not something that was ever normal for me. It's something that was introduced to me once I've already fully formed my ideas of how gender is. So it's something that always takes a little work for me to have to include that. But it doesn't matter if it makes me uncomfortable. They don't owe it to me to make, they don't, they don't owe me comfort. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Um, um, another thing that I want to say about that is, um, gosh, how was I saying this? Um, you know, I mean, I'm not I'm not saying I can't understand why you would uh, 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 come to that conclusion, because if, if you're arguing that it's unnecessary or whatever, let me let me kind of make I want to back up here and I want to try this another way. Would you say you believe everyone should be vegan? Well, um, you know, that, that that's a very tough question. Um, sure. I I would say that everyone could be vegan. Um, uh -huh. Not necessarily we would need everyone to be vegan. Um, I, mm -hmm. I'd say that if a very large percentage of people were vegan, I'm sure we'd be able to outweigh the damage done by the people that lived uh, more conventional lifestyles. So um, it's kind of a um, kind of you know it's kind of a difficult question. What would I would want is I would want you know as many people as possible, of course, to live ethically and to understand why it's important to live ethically. That's what mm -hmm. I would want. So it's kind of a tricky question. Um, I don't I, I don't necessarily believe that we would need to have a world with only vegans um, and people that you know live that kind of lifestyle. Uh, but you know, in, in the same way, I also don't believe that everyone should be heterosexual because I acknowledge and I understand that there are people that are gay, uh, lesbian or transgender. You know, these are real people. I, I in no way am trying to say that these aren't real people. You know, um, I just I, I just where I come from, you know, and I think a lot of people, a, a lot of people are also very quick to judge uh, people that are transphobic and, you know, people ridicule people that are transphobic. Mm -hmm. It's very, it's kind of a, it's kind of um, uh, an, an elephant in the room because if, if someone's transphobic, you know, like as, as me, like I'm transphobic. So I have a lot of people who really are upset of the way that I act and upset yeah. with how I am. And uh, I just think that, um, I think it's not really fair because, you know, kind of like the way that I judge someone who's perhaps transgender, you know, I'm being judged for someone who's transphobic. They don't know why I'm transphobic. They don't know what kind of experiences I've had. They don't know mm -hmm. uh, what my socialization and my, my, my childhood was like, you know. Mm -hmm. so, so, like, I, I'm not necessarily going to talk about anything from my own life, but just for an example, so maybe we could quickly understand where I'm coming from. Say, for example, someone uh, grew up and as a child was perhaps molested by someone who was transgender. And, you know, you might say that that's very rare, but that actually does happen. And, and there is there is times where people have been abused, sexually abused by someone mm -hmm. at a young age that was, you know, perhaps transgender or maybe uh, gay or lesbian um or someone who is heterosexual it, it's the same thing like people people are raped by heterosexuals and i believe mm -hmm. it's actually even a larger percent of people um, it is. raped by by heterosexuals it is. <laughs> so 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 we could understand someone who is raped by heterosexuals they have a natural fear 
they 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 have a natural they have a natural fear and uh you know so it's the same way like like for me for an instance i have a natural fear because of things that have happened to me in the past so you know i i kind of i wouldn't say natural i would actually consider it an unnatural fear yeah. but it's an understandable fear and it's a justified or a rationalized fear like you have a reason why it's there and that reason makes sense to you um i wouldn't agree that it's natural that fear because like let's look back at the native americans they they just did not have that fear right so we can't yeah. argue that that fear is natural yes of course um i i i do see the flaw there i guess but the um, fact is that fear is there and i'm just going to kind of turn this around right now on even the people watching because like i have lots of respect for each every single individual who is watching um but even in the comments, I would challenge people and actually invite people um, to to like what who would you have to be to have compassion for Darren in this conversation? Who would you have to be being in order to be able to include him in your compassion? Because honestly, if we want to make him the monster in this scenario, consider that we're choosing to make a monster of the person who is willing to admit he's transphobic, willing to admit his behavior towards trans people does not work, and is willing to have a conversation with us for like nearly two hours now talking about it. Um, so I would invite people, it's very, very easy when there's like 11 of us together watching, commenting, to like jump in and um, kind of tease him a bit about this. That, that would be very, very easy. And I'm not interested in any of us coming out of this conversation as the same person we were when we started it. I'm only choosing to do this with my day for the purpose of all of us becoming a better person by the time we go to bed tonight. Darren, I'm gonna quickly let you go and then bring you back in because I've been looking at your handsome chin right here for like the last like 10 minutes and I, I can hear you, but I, uh, I need to see more than just your chin. Can I quickly bring you back in? Sure. All right, one sec. Okay, here we go. So I have, uh, and by the way, to some of the comments, like, no, not true at all, the amount of women. Yeah, sure, absolutely. I mean, Darren and I might absolutely misspeak at some point in, in, in this argument. Um, it, it absolutely may happen. Um, I would just ask that people, like, grant us the same sort of space to make mistakes, given that, like, we're human and we're, you know, we both can't be 100% right all the time. Um, and what we're talking about, like neither of us is on a pedestal saying, this is what the truth is. It is two guys just talking about like their perception and their experience and, and their feelings. So, um, I know what I'm asking you is hard to do, but like, try to bring a lightness to this. That would make it easier to stay in this conversation because the minute that this gets really heavy and really serious, Welcome back. We can see you now. Um, I'm telling people, I'm inviting people to, to see if they can't bring a lightness to this conversation in how they're hearing and receiving it. Because the minute that this becomes really serious and really offensive and really upsetting, then it becomes a really hard, insufferable conversation to have. And I don't think anyone here would argue that this is a very important conversation to have. So if people are like... Um, you know, reactivated or traumatized by what we're saying, I would invite you to maybe step out of the conversation and then rejoin it at a later time um, when you're in a better place to hear it. Um, but I have, and I'm, I'm kind of being overly polite about this, but in the notes, what maybe you didn't see them, but I did post in my Instagram story behind this, that like, this is my conversation. I'm setting the ground rules here. And the same kind of, I mean, you'll notice I'm not letting Darren off the hook. If he says something I take issue with, I will stop him and I'll tell him, right? But I do want to do the same thing with everyone watching. I did say in my Instagram story, that, like, I will not tolerate hostility. I will not tolerate name calling. I won't tolerate teasing. However, I worded that. But um, I also tolerate it towards um, Darren. A friend is calling me. I'm going to have to refuse his call because I'm on a live right now. Uh, I also won't tolerate it toward Darren because you know what? Like, go and spread that that like, you know, return hate um, towards someone who's not choosing to be here talking with us about it, right? Um, like, where else would we want Darren to be right now? Like, you know, where else would we want him to be other than right here? So, um, one of the other things 
gosh, does anyone remember where I was? Because there was a point that I really wanted to make that I was in the middle of making right when we ended the last uh, conversation. Or Darren, do you remember what it was that I was saying? Um, well, I, I believe that... Uh... Uh, no, I, I, I can't. I can't really remember. I'm sorry. No, no worries. Uh, if there is anyone who does remember uh, what we were saying or where we left off in the conversation, I'd love if you could. I think I kind of know where we were going. So I, we were I, talking. Should everyone be vegan? Is that right? Yeah. Uh, that's what we were talking about earlier. Um, I yeah. believe what we were talking about was how I, I have a fear of of trans people and right, I, right. I i said that it was natural and um you said you know of course it's not something that's natural that's that's a Perfect. choice i've made uh you know I, that's a choice i've made because of of you know my experiences and and my own you know choices right so um yeah and and, I, and we said some more after that but i i can't really remember. i think that that's very helpful i know exactly where to pick up Everyone else listening, does Darren sound quieter than he did a moment ago? Because to me, my phone's turned all the way up, but it sounds really quiet when I am trying to listen to you. So talk again. Yeah, um, I just... I now you're in the right volume. Okay, seconds. perfect. Maybe it was on my end. I suddenly, I, after that phone call came in, I suddenly couldn't hear you. So um, when you were talking, even I, I even want to correct you. This is very presumptuous of me to correct you on your own feelings. But even, Darren, when you say you've chosen to feel this way, I would not agree that you've chosen this. That is something that happened subconsciously. And maybe you've never had an opportunity to have this kind of conversation. But what I hope is suddenly possible for you after this conversation is that that fear, that discomfort that you've been living with, now we've opened up some space where you can be like, okay, well, do I want to let that fear run the show? Or as someone who's chosen to make my Instagram name, peace, kindness, hope, do I want to choose to be peace and be kindness and be hope, even if I do have a fear, right? I'm not going to say that that fear is something you chose, but the moment you become aware that that is a fear and it's there, that's the moment that you get to either interrupt it or let it run the show. Um, the thing that I want to say, we were talking about, should everyone go vegan? And yes, that is it. If it smells like a trick question, it's because it is. And here's what I would say. I used to think everyone should go vegan. I do not think everyone should go vegan. I really don't. Now, that's probably a shock to everyone listening. Um, and I'm sure people are so ready to tell me I'm wrong, I'm wrong, or I'm not really a vegan if I think that. Here's what's up. I'm very open about this. I'm a person in recovery. I have been sober for just over 10 years now. I have not had a drink or a drug in 10 years. Um, people, this is not common knowledge. Certainly, I didn't know about this when I got sober, but people in recovery are, are often advised, you know, in your first year of sobriety, no major life changes. Do not date. Do not move. Do not quit your job. Don't move to a different city. And they have to say that because often when an alcoholic gets sober, the first thing they want to do is like, I'm going to move to a different city. I'm going to get in a relationship. I'm going to divorce. No major life changes in your first year. That includes going vegan. Veganism is a major life change. Now, I can already hear some of the potential arguments out there percolating in people's brains. I can hear the yeah buts, the what ifs, the how abouts. I can hear them because I have them myself. Here's the thing. There is a correlation between alcohol and blood sugar. It's, and I'm sure people aren't like, what do you mean? Blood, alcohol is a lot, is, is, is so much of it is sugar. It's a, there's a lot of sugar in alcohol. When you drink an alcoholic beverage, your body gets a spike of blood sugar. Then it responds to that with the insulin response and blah, blah, blah. When you suddenly stop drinking alcohol, suddenly your body is like, where did all that extra blood sugar go? And suddenly you're going to have these energy crashes, these mood swings. And the way that that will show up in your behavior is you're going to suddenly feel like, I don't know why I've been sober for like 13 days or I've been sober for four months, but God, I really feel this urge to drink. And what a lot of people in recovery don't realize is like, no, you're not feeling an urge to drink. What you're feeling is low blood sugar. Go get a candy bar. Go get some ice cream. Go get whatever. Now, here's the thing I tell people. I've had a lot of people that I've sponsored, a lot of people I've just worked with as friends, 
And they'll be like, oh, my God, that vegan, that's so cool. I want to go vegan. And I'm like, okay, cool. You can go vegan when you get a year sober, if you get a year sober. Not everyone gets it. A year sober is not a, is not a given. You don't get to assume you're going to get to one year sober. Alcoholism is a fatal and progressive illness. It takes lots of people's lives. I've been to a lot of funerals in 10 years of sobriety. When someone is early in their recovery and they have an urge to suddenly drink alcohol, very often, if they simply have some sugar, it'll make that feeling go away. So when people tell me, oh, I want to go vegan, I'm like, okay, cool. You have six months sober. You don't get to go vegan yet. And they're like, well, why not? Well, that's not fair. You can't tell me what you do. I'm like, listen, what neighborhood do you live in? They're like, well, I live in Washington Heights, which is like the upper part of Manhattan. I'm like, all right, cool, cool. You live in Washington Heights. Okay, well, you're home alone. It's two in the morning. You suddenly get an urge to have a drink. Do you know where to go in your neighborhood at two in the morning to grab a pint of vegan ice cream? And they're like, uh, uh, and I'm like, exactly. You don't get to go vegan yet. For someone in there, can, can you kind of see why, what I mean by that? Yeah, yeah, I, I guess so, yeah. And listen, we could be all high and mighty. We could be all ideological right now about like, well, that human doesn't have the right to use animal products to curb their, well, you know what? This is a fucking sick and suffering alcoholic. And if they don't curb those, those uh, cravings for alcohol, like that alcohol that could be back out on the street, back out driving on the road, they could be back out driving back home from the bar that that night that they went to to satisfy that craving to drink and kill how many people or kill how many animals, right? Like as a, as a matter of public health, we need alcoholics to have access to treatment and access to the tools of recovery. And for that reason, someone in their first year of recovery, absolutely not the right candidate to also have them worry about going V. Okay. This is someone who's like, what do you mean live without marijuana, live without alcohol, live without Adderall or whatever their drug of choice is. All three of those are my drugs of choice. I mean, in my first few months of recovery, like I didn't know what to do at the end of the night when I got home. Like I could get through my day okay. Like I could get through anything as long as I knew, even if it's just five minutes before I go to bed, I get to smoke pot. I could get through anything. So for several, the first several months of like, I don't get, there's no relief. There's no, there's no button I get to press that takes the edge off. I just have to like be sober the whole time. I can't imagine if someone had come along and told me I have to be vegan. And thank God it was actually during that first year that someone kind of floated the idea of veganism my way. And he's like, oh, well, if you want more info, there's this book. I read that book. And then I started listening to some podcasts. And by the time I went vegan, like, and I, I didn't wait that long. Like I had, I had like a year and like two months, three months, a year and three months, almost to the day. At 15 months sober, I went vegan and I've never looked back. And today I'm someone who is, you know, I'm um, on the subway heading back uptown now. Sorry, my friend is messaging me and I think he's on his way over. So I'm going to quickly uh, just make sure um, that he's able to uh, get in. Um, are you heading to my place? I'm going to type my address, but I'm going to fight the urge to say it out loud. Um, just tell the doorman you're here for me. God, that sounds fancy. Anyway, so here we go. So you see what I'm saying? Like, there are people who they just don't, I'm not going to preach to, to, to newly sober alcoholics that they have to go vegan. Also, when I meet people who have eating disorders, I don't have an eating disorder. I don't understand bulimia. I don't understand anorexia. I don't understand orthorexia. I'm just not about to tell a former bulimic that on top of learning how to live with their substance of choice, on top of having to learn how to eat a little bit each day without ever overdoing it and compulsively throwing up, I'm just not about to tell them like, hey, on top of all of that, you also have to live this. I'm just leaving them alone for now. If they want to come find us, I hope to make the animal rights community as welcoming and inclusive and safe for them as possible. While I do continue to urge the importance of joining us, but not directed at them, but directed outward to the world. So when they find me in my work, they can listen to me or not. I'm not going to tell them what they need to do. And lastly, and not to make this too sad or too depressing, but like my friend Jason 
Uh, there's Jason and Jason, the Jasons, married couple. Uh, I've known big Jason uh, for 20 years and little Jason for 15 years. And they got married like, I don't know, 15 or 20 years ago. And in November, big Jason took his life. Big Jason was living with, I never knew that anxiety could be that bad that someone would take their life because of it. He, you know, little Jason says, yeah, we went to the grocery store and I'd find him just like comatose in an aisle. It's like he, it's like he could, he was unresponsive. He couldn't talk. He couldn't move. He would just freeze because he had to choose a cereal. And somehow in his brain, that's what was going on. He basically was bedridden towards the end. He was practically a vegetable. He couldn't work. He couldn't leave the house. And little Jason had to, like, take care of this guy through all of that. And then one day he comes home and there is big Jason's body. And congratulations, you're in your early 40s and you're single for the first time in 20 years, going to bed in the same bed that you used to have a husband in, living in the same home that you guys made together. And I went, I did a show in Ithaca. And so I went to see little Jason and I felt like the world's biggest jerk because it's my first time in their home of 15 years never did I make it up to visit them. And now I'm in their home and big Jason's not there. And um, he was telling me how dinner was especially difficult, like getting dinner ready because big Jason couldn't help. Little Jason had to do all the work and make all the money. And it was so frustrating because like little Jason's not a cook by any means, but he has to do all of this. And then he talks about, he discovered blue apron. This is not a commercial for for blue apron, but he discovered blue apron. Like, wait, I can just click on what we like to eat and it'll arrive in a box in my door. And then I have the recipes and all the ingredients. All I have to do is throw this together and put it in the oven and oh my God, dinner's done. And he talks about how he actually got to a point where he learned to love the process of being the person to make dinner. So here I am in Ithaca and I'm visiting Jason and his blue apron arrives and he's in the kitchen talking about everything that I just told you as he's opening his thing. And then the look on his face, he's like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. As he's taking the shrimp out, as he's taking out the chicken and he's like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. And I'm like, Jason, don't you dare apologize to me right now that you're not a fucking vegan. Like, can you get how crazy that is? Like, Jason, if the only thing you manage to do with the rest of your life is pick up the pieces and put your life back together and you manage to find some shred of joy again, that's all I hope for you. Who am I to tell you, you know, the day that my husband of 20 years takes his life and I'm suddenly single for the first time in 20 years, maybe then I get to weigh in. But I'm like, listen, you do you. I'll just go and focus on everyone else in the world. And just like you were saying, we don't need a vegan world 100%. I bet you if 90% of the world went vegan tomorrow, the other 10 would just be like, meh, I have no choice. It's just easier to go vegan. Animal-based food is really expensive. You know, it's hard to find and blah, blah, blah. It's elitist. They'd have no choice but to join us. It would be the easier thing to do. I'm getting the 10-second reminder that I have to end this. I know we're basically a time we should wrap up, but if I can quickly end. Okay, we're going. And uh, when people join this, I'm, I'm just going to type, I'm turning the air conditioner back on BRB, BRB. I'm going to pin that comment. I'm going to pin that comment, pin that comment, pin it. I'll be right back. If he comes back, tell him, don't worry, Ben didn't leave you. He's just turning on the AC because I'm sweating. Like I'm going through the change. I need some estrogen. Right back, right back, right back. Oof. Okay, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. I'm almost here. I'm almost here. All right. You guys, it is so cool to me that I even have a bedroom. I'm not even used to living in a in an apartment with my own room. All right, here we are. So you're totally right. Vegan is not expensive. But how many people still try to use that as an argument, right? Oh, air conditioning. I'm bringing him back on. That is so very true. My, um, uh, here we go. He's coming back. Um, I'm going to unpin that comment because it no longer makes sense. 
Um, my, um, I used to have a co-host on my podcast and she once took, I think it's called like the, the food stamp challenge or something where you basically have to be vegan on $20 a week and they give you all the recipes. And she's like, Ben, I was giving food away to people because I couldn't eat all of it. It was so delicious, but there was so much of it for 20 bucks a week. So when people say it's expensive, I'm like, et cetera. But you see what I mean now when I'm saying, like, I think there are people, welcome back, by the way, I, I do think that there are people who I'm not going to tell them they need to be vegan. You know, someone who's dealing with the loss of their husband, someone who has an eating disorder, someone who's newly sober, I'm just, I'm just going to kind of leave them alone and be like, you know what, they're on their journey. I got to kind of, you know, let them get here in their own way. Um, but in the meantime, like, if... You know how they say if 10% of the population does something, everyone else kind of follows them. I think vegans are already at like 1% or 2% of the population. I've been vegan nine years, and it almost next month, like in six, in, in, in five or six weeks, it'll be nine years. So I'm just going to say nine years. Um, and for six months prior, I was like a vegetarian. Like that's anything to be proud of. <laughs> anyway, um, but I, uh, in the nine years that I've been vegan, I've seen a huge growth, not just in number of vegans, but the availability of vegan options, people's understanding of veganism. So I'm confident that in my lifetime, we will get to that 10% tipping point. I don't think we're going to need to worry about getting to 90%. I think once we get to 10% of the pop, if 10%, one in every 10 people is vegan, I think, boom, the world is just going to finally tip over in that direction. Given that, and I pulled up this figure on my computer, but given that it's estimated that around the world, like somewhere between like 0.6 to like 1.2% of the world identifies as transgender, I think we can just include the entire transgender community in that small percentage of like, if no trans person ever went vegan, I think we'd still be fine. Like, I still think progress could be made. So I'm saying that to sort of drive home the point that to focus on this small group of already marginalized people who are already having all sorts of rights taken away from them, who are already like prone to all sorts of violence and murder, that goes uninvestigated. Um, I just don't think that that's an effective form of outreach is going after those people to try to tell them that, hey, it's cool that you opened this huge farm sanctuary in Columbus, Georgia, and it's awesome that you haven't eaten an animal in 20 years, and it's great that you volunteer your time doing all of this outreach, but because you are taking estrogen, right? Can, does, that, does that seem a little different now to you, that sort of an argument? Um, you know, like, uh, I, I just, I guess if, if, if I had a wish, um, may it be someone who's taking, uh, taking hormone therapy, um, or is taking the estrogen, um, I, uh, or if you're just someone like me, who's trying to live more, more ethically, uh, for, for the kind of lifestyle that I have, um, if everyone could live without, you know, without, causing harm to animals and ca causing harm to you know you by using products that we don't uh that we could maybe find another option for uh, you know I, mm -hmm. I i'm technically i i'm waiting for the day that transgender people can withgo uh some sort of uh therapy that they need um physically without having uh, the use the use of animal products I'm, I'm wishing that we could find uh say for example like different supplements and different other you know other things like plastic bags plastic bags aren't necessarily vegan sure, sure. Because, it's, because it's not necessarily ethical right and, well, just to uh, the point of fact though because we've already gone over this transgender people absolutely do have access to synthetic estrogen synthetic so from the from the supplement and medication side we're already there they already have they already have access to that and they already have the access to make those choices and yes there are still human beings who choose animal products right yeah, I, I guess that's something I was I was unaware of. Um, mm -hmm. I just saw uh, from from what I read was maybe uh, perhaps misleading. And of course, like you see things on social media, and it's not necessarily the most uh, reliable information, um, you know, so uh, 
I guess, you know, and, and like, like you had said earlier, I maybe only have talked to one or two people that are transgender and they're not necessarily people that would choose ethical options if they were available or even perhaps know about them. Um, so, you know, I, I guess it's wrong for me to assume and marginalize that all uh, people that are trans are, you know, drinking, uh, drinking the blood of animals. Um, like you said, it's, it's not even animal blood. So, um, yeah. so yeah, I guess, uh, I guess I, I can see how, how that, that, that is wrong to, uh, you know, to, to, to just assume that all people have contributed to that. Uh, but at the same time, you know, like, I guess, um, I guess really even, even though maybe, what they do or their their way their method of how they live their lifestyle if it's not necessarily wrong in any way what they're doing you know it can still be somewhat you know it can still be somewhat traumatizing to uh you know not necessarily like say for example for me someone who's transphobic like i i can still be friends with someone who's uh who's transsexual i can still be friends with someone mm -hmm. who's gay or bisexual or who's you know uh queer or whatever you know it's it's not necessarily every single uh uh trans transgender person that that bothers me it's just like i do have experience where i have been you know frightened before uh by someone who is transgender you know so mm -hmm. so for me it's like you know even if i even if i had no uh, uh disagreements with what they do I would still have this, you know, basic, basic phobia of them, you know, so, so even though it might be wrong for me to, uh, you know, throw my hate towards an entire community of people that have not necessarily done anything wrong. Um, but, you know, for me, like, it, it's very hard for me to uh, live around what has happened to me. So like, you know, I, I hope you understand that, and I hope that makes sense. I, I do. Was... I do. Listen, people are going to take issue with me saying this right now, but there's no such thing as an invalid point of view. You can't tell me that there's any such thing as an invalid point of view. I am sure it is very tempting for people, even for me, to want to invalidate your point of view, but you know what I can't argue with? That's your point of view. That is your point of view. I can't try to say that your point of view is wrong because it's just a point of view, and that's all it is. Right. Once upon a time, I had a point of view that it was OK to eat animals. Once upon a time, I had a point of view that what we do to cows is funny. That was my point of view at the time. And I lived by it and it changed. So, yeah, it, what you said helps me understand where you're coming from. What I would offer in, 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 in turn is that uh, and someone made a really good um, a really good uh, point. So I want to include what they said. But before I do that, I want to say. It definitely sounds, and I'm not a psychiatrist. I mean, like, I think I've played one. No, I haven't. I played a doctor. I played an inept doctor twice, um, but uh, never got the footage. When you do student films, you need to know you will never get the footage. Anyway, um, but it does sound like for whatever reason, if Superwoman's Eleven basically just beat me to it. She, she said what I was trying to say is that it does sound like you've had something happen to you. It does sound like you've had a trauma. And listen. The fact that we live in a world where being transgender is absolutely natural and normal because it's existed for however many thousands of years. I mean, like the First Nations people observed more than two genders. Many cultures throughout eons have observed more than two genders. But then, you know, like this puritanical colonial religious sort of uh, era is ushered in and suddenly we have all these views about women and we have all these views about sexuality and all these views about gender. And so, yes, this is, we have all, you and me and trans people, we have all been victimized. We have all been traumatized by these ideas about gender that have been imposed on us. They're not being imposed on us by trans people. Trans people are just trying to like, can I just have a little shoulder room in this world? I just want to breathe a little bit and just be me. But they're living in a world where it's like, you absolutely cannot be who you are, blah, 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 blah. But it sounds to me like your whole life, you've kind of been told, oh my God, they're the boogeyman. Oh my God, they're these awful deviant people. Oh my God, they're this, they're that, they're the other. They drink animal blood, you know, whatever. 
I can imagine how terrifying that would be if I believed that to be true. I can imagine how terrifying that would be if I had some sort of a real life. And I'm not going to ask you to relive or qualify your traumas for us. You don't owe us that. But if there is trauma that you've had surrounding gender or sexual orientation, then like I can understand why it's traumatizing for you. What I would say is you aren't responsible for the fact that trauma has happened to you. But here and now, what you are responsible for is how you respond to that trauma. And you may do it well, you may not do it well. You know, I'm sure you've seen for yourself, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But your right to swing your fist, it ends where my nose begins. And the moment that your trauma becomes our trauma, the moment that your, your trauma becomes violence that actually gets directed at us in the real world, whether or not you're ever going to be there to see it happen to us. Um, that's the moment where someone's got to step in and intervene and be like, this is now a problem for us. Like you're actually now contributing to somebody else's hurt and somebody else's trauma. And I could very easily use your same argument against you and say, Darren, my friend, you are not a real vegan because you are harming other living beings and creatures, right? Who are less privileged than you and who have less access and less resources than you. I could use that same argument and tell you that, you know what, like, humans are animals too. And, you know, causing their suffering um, is also, not, I wouldn't argue that that's not vegan because I think that that's not helping anyone. But one thing I do want to uh, 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 say, just because someone earlier did make this point in the comments, and I think it really deserves to be said, Yes, there is synthetic hormones. I don't know whether those are more expensive. I don't know whether those are hard to come by. And let me ask you, Darren, you run a logging business. If you needed to hire someone and you had two people show up for the job and one looks just like you and one is a transgender woman of color and they both chop wood just as good, I think you know who you're more likely to hire. And transgender people absolutely face discrimination in housing, and employment um and so you you know you you can't ima you, you 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 can probably imagine that the earning potential of your average transgender person especially your average transgender woman of color is probably not on par with what you and i can be expected to earn so do they have the luxury of affording all these animal free alternatives that i don't know so once again, it kind of makes it seem to me like, who am I to say that they should be doing it this way or should be doing it that way? Do you see what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, you know, uh, I guess my, my, my argument here is that, you know, like, okay, trans, transphobic have uh, the way that they are and they have their needs and wants because of, you know, whatever, for whatever reasons. Um, you know, you're saying that they, they should have that right, you know, well, well, for me, someone who's been traumatized, someone who's, you know, has experience, uh, you know, with with someone of a certain ethnic group who has, you know, perhaps assaulted them, they they would, you know, you would imagine that they would also have the right too to feel the way they feel because, you know, mm -hmm. I, the only exception is that, you know, my feelings is hurting someone else. Uh, but at the same time, you know, being transgender hurts, you know, my feelings, you know, because I have to live in a world where, uh, you know, I see uh, what I would consider a hurting community, uh, you know, be, you know, be be given bad influence, you know, through all, all forms of, you know, uh, socialization, like not, I'm not saying that transgender uh, themselves are necessarily a hundred percent responsible for that, but I mean, like, you know, for 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 me, uh, to to be completely honest, I'm someone when I was I was younger uh, was uh, briefly traumatized by someone who is transgender. So mm -hmm. um, I, I I'm I'm someone like who who has a set of beliefs that I, that I believe, you know, and, and, and someone who's transgender, there's someone who has grown up feeling they've been in the wrong body. So they have a set of beliefs, you know? And so like, I guess where, I guess where, what I'm getting at here is, you know, as someone who's transgender, I mean, sorry, as someone who's transphobic, um, of mm -hmm. course, uh, I'm, I'm someone who's, um, you know, I, I, I would believe that I should have the same respect to, be who I am because I shouldn't have to 
not be uh, transphobic because that's who I am. I, I, I was not born like this, but I learned mm -hmm. this behavior from something that happened to me. This is something I'll never forget. So, you yeah. know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't necessarily be forced to be a certain person uh, how you guys would want, because you guys would want me not to be transphobic. You guys would sure. wish that I would forget about my trauma. You know, you, yeah. you, guys, you guys wish that I would never speak uh, negatively about the community again or have those negative feelings, you know, about, about my trauma. And, you know, so it's kind of, it's, in my opinion, it's kind of how I feel like with transgender because I, I would wish that these people would maybe do something differently with how they're feeling and maybe not take a sex change. You know, so it's not really fair for me to judge transgender for the choices they make. At the same mm -hmm. time, it's not really necessarily fair for someone who's transgender for, to judge me for being the kind of person I am after what I've gone through in my childhood. I'm actually going to agree with you a thousand percent. No one who is transgender has a right to judge you for who you are or how you are. I'll also say that as a gay man, I don't have the right to judge someone who is homophobic for feeling how they feel, um, especially when I can, I, can, uh, I can bet money on they don't feel the way they feel because they arrived at that conclusion organically through no trauma. They just la-di-da, hey, I'm going to hate gay people. What I do have a right to do, though, is speak up when those people are stepping on my toes, when those people are hurting me. And what I, I and it sounds like you're you are in agreement with that. But as you see it, though, there is also this harm that is coming to you from their existence. That's not how you've put it, because I'm sure even to you that kind of sounds like, ooh, that sounds harsh to say it that way. But what I am hearing from you is that there is still this experience of being re-traumatized every time you see someone kind of playing with the concept of gender or being trans or transitioning or talking about whatever and you've kind of just been in search of a reason to like here's why i can say i don't like that because it's not vegan because it's not necessary because whatever it kind of sounds this is just my take on it but it's and again i'm not a doctor whatever but it does sound to me like you're kind of looking for justification of why that's there because you don't know why that's there, but you know that the pain is there. And you know that where gender and trans and all that shows up, it always comes with the sort of pain that you have to deal with. What I want to tell you is like the calls coming from inside the house. That is not something outside that is being imposed on you. Someone did something to you when you were younger. And like, I, I want to apologize to you for that, you know, like I, 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 I'm so angry that we live in a kind of world where children aren't safe. Um, and my God, I mean, the fact that it's affecting you to this day, like that's not fair to you and you didn't deserve any of what happened to you. What I, what I hope you can come to realize is that um, that's not something that trans people today are continuing to do to you. Those are not people who had anything to do with what happened to you. Um, these are just people who like now to them, you've become the perpetrator of, you know, you've become the bully, you become the person who is antagonizing and harming them. I am certain that that's not what you intend. Um, I don't know how certain, but like, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt that you're not meaning to be that guy. But like, again, your right to swing your fist ends where my nose begins, you know, and that trans person's right to exist and to be who they are is not, now your screen's freezing again, I'm getting the little thing again, but you can still hear me, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay, great. Okay. Um, you're frozen, but it's like a very pensive pose, so it works, I'm gonna go with it. But that, that trans person just existing, that is not a harm happening to you. If that is a harm happening to you, if that is continuously re-traumatizing you every time you experience it, I need you to own that and be responsible for it. That is coming from you. That is coming, you know, I do not hold you responsible that you are transphobic. I would say we all have a little transphobia in us, just as we all have a little homophobia. We all have a little sexism. We all have a little racism. I can't stand when people try to act like they don't. So I do not hold you responsible that you grew up in a transphobic world, that you grew up with beliefs that are transphobic. I do not hold you responsible that you find trans people, you know, that you find yourself uncomfortable around that. I don't hold you responsible for that. What I do hold you responsible for 
is what you do about that. And when you make that their problem, when you decide to take that pain and direct it back at them, um, you, you just don't have a right to do that. And th that's, not, that's not why I'm saying this. That should be obvious. What I want to tell you is, Darren, that is not going to bring you healing. It's not. There is no cheese down that tunnel. There is no BioLife vegan cheese down that tunnel. That's, that's, that is never going to alleviate the pain that you're experiencing. Um, you know, what we don't understand terrifies us. And I'm not saying you need to go and immerse yourself in the trans community or volunteer at a trans homeless shelter or whatever. But I will tell you, like, the way that you are going about it, I would assert that is what's keeping the pain fresh for you. Um, you know, that, that serves a good point. Maybe, maybe perhaps that is true. Um, I guess, you know, I guess what's happened to me is something that happened quite a few years ago. And it seems to be now that I'm, I'm seeing more of the LGBTQ community, I guess it's kind of re-triggering the trauma that happened before because I'm constantly exposed to this community. Um, mm -hmm. And then, you know, it's, it's, it's my choice how I decide to act on it if I'm going to let that fear, uh, let that fear, you know, dictate how I choose to treat people. Um, but, you know, like, I, I just, I, I, I just, you know, I, I think I think really what needs to happen is for for people to make progress, because, you know, we, we, we could take we could take hours and, and hours and talk about this. But I think really what what is important for us here is that, uh, at least for me, is what is important for me is that I understand how I can live my life, um, you know, without, you know, without hurting people and kind of making a difficult situation even worse for myself, you know, because I don't think, like, I agree with you, it's not necessarily in any means fair to treat trans community uh, the way that I treat them because, you know, some specific person harmed me in the past. Uh, but at the same time, like, I do have this real, uh, very, very real and, and uh, somewhat constantly occurring as of right now, occurring issue of where I am uh, somewhat traumatized by what's happened to me in the past. So mm -hmm. I guess I have to, I have to do certain things in my life of someone who is transphobic to make sure that my transphobia, may it be a really real thing or not, is not affecting people that don't deserve any of that kind of treatment so right. maybe maybe if i could move forward what i could do is just like make sure that i'm very accepting to trans just the way that they deserve to be accepted i'm just uh still you know still have you know the feelings that i have in inside me i i think a lot of people they kind of they're very quick to judge me and say that i i don't deserve to feel the way that i feel and i i feel that's i feel that's wrong i mean if someone if someone has feeling that they're, you know, transgender, I, I, I deserve to have the feeling that maybe I don't agree with transgender, you know, but I think at the same time, even though we have different beliefs, we have to learn to coexist. And, you know, because who's to say that you are right, who's to say that I'm right, I mean, there's no one, there's no one necessarily and and, and I am also not saying that I'm disagreeing with you. I, I've actually, now that I've spoken uh, a lot more on the subject and now that I've spoken with, uh, with you on this, you know, you've, you've definitely made me think differently about how I feel. Um, so maybe next time I won't be so quick to, uh, to be hateful and uh, be aggressive uh, with, with my transphobia. Mm -hmm. um, and and maybe, maybe if there's people that dislike uh, people that are transphobic, maybe they can learn to uh, truly truly understand why they are the way that they are instead of telling them they're wrong for how they feel because you know is as wrong as i could be for how i acted um you know it's it's not necessarily fair for people to uh judge and to you know be unfair to people that are transphobic because well we, right know, because at the end of the day, Darren, you tell me how much of a difference would it have been if I just kept telling you you're transphobic and you're wrong and you're a piece of shit? What difference would that have made for you? Well, that would, uh, of course, it wouldn't uh, make a difference, right? It would just make me, of course, more 
more upset and exactly any of that more statement. justified you probably you know you would have just dug in your heels that much more like well see see i'm right i don't think that i don't think anyone stands to gain anything from making you the bad guy or making you wrong for being where you're at but by telling you like hey i get where you're at i've been there you know and let's you know let's let's have a conversation about it sure yeah um i guess uh I guess, you know, like, I, I'm not necessarily, um, I'm not necessarily, and I think I said this before, it's not a specific or every single trans person that makes me uncomfortable. In fact, like I, like I said, I, I've actually have a, a one or two uh, friends that actually are transgender. So, you know, like, I, I, I can be friends with someone who is transgender, um, oh, but at the same time, I, I have a certain fear that maybe something terrible like happened to me before what would happen because like if I would compare what happened to me before in my childhood uh, to experiences I've had with other transgender people in real life, it's much different than that. So I guess people don't understand that I'm not truly scared of all transgender people and mm -hmm. I, I'm not necessarily offended or, uh, you know, at... Uh, you know, some sort of, you know, uneasiness because of transgender people. It's actually the uneasiness of the idea that what happened to me would happen again, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and you know, it's kind of like someone, it's like a, a man or a woman who had been raped, you know, they're not necessarily scared of all men, but they are a fear of someone might do that to them again, you know? Yeah. And just to be responsible for the language here, I can imagine how people might resent that comparison. Like, you can't compare that. Listen, he's just trying to explain it the way that it is for him. For me, I think about bees. I've been stung once or twice in my early childhood by bees, like stung in the forehead and had to be rushed to the hospital. I barely remember it. But what I do remember is I'm fucking terrified of bees. You know, and like, it's, is it irrational? Yes. But like, I live my life in the fear that I'm going to be stung by a bee again and rushed to the hospital. It is different for all of us, but you know, these fears are irrational, but what we can't argue our way around is boy, do they run our lives, don't they? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, I, I try not to, it's a, it's actually quite a rare occurrence where I have problems or, yeah. uh, an issue with someone who is uh, LGBTQ community, um, but at, mm -hmm. at times with with the experience I could be having with people that are transgender, I'm I'm definitely letting my past trauma uh, run what I could be experiencing with these people because you know because of my prejudice and my my fear and uh, my my preformed ideas mm -hmm. of these people. Mm -hmm. so, can, so I I, yeah, question? I, I, can I ask you a quick question, Darren? I'm sorry to interrupt. I feel like we probably should start wrapping it up, especially because you're also like in a very handsome freeze frame. But can I ask you one last question? Yes, of course. And, and are, you, are you okay if we end with it here? I feel like we could probably talk sure. five more hours and find a lot to say, but I think this is a good place to end it. But let me ask you, if that fear, if that fear of trans people, if that fear around gender, if that transphobia was not there anymore, can you tell me what that would be like for you? Um, I guess, uh, you know, I guess sometimes I, I would feel a lot more relieved. You know, I, I guess I would feel a lot more relieved. Um, there's there's not necessarily a lot of trans or lgbtq people in my community so it's not necessarily something that affects me on a on a wide scale basis but it is something that has uh definitely i, I i've stressed myself out over it a lot i've thought mm -hmm. about it a lot and uh you know if i could grow away from from the idea that uh, these people are bad i'm sure that would definitely help me emotionally on yeah. uh on a wide scale um, so, so yeah, I, I, I can see the benefit of, uh, being more open to the fact that people are individuals and, um, you know, not every single person is, uh, you know, out to get me in a way, or every single person is out there to take advantage of me. You know, there are good people out there and I can't really, you know, judge a, a group of people based on, based on, you know, my experience with, with one person. Uh -huh. 
One last thing, let me ask you. So what I'm hearing in your answer, Darren, is that if that fear of, of gender, if that transphobia was no longer there for you, I'm hearing that you would you would get to be open, you would get to be accepting, you would get to feel free and like peaceful, and you would experience like a sense of relief. Like your shoulders would probably even feel a bit more relaxed, right? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it's a. Uh, it's at that point. Um, you know, right? And, I mean, for and, me, all my right all now, my stress is in my shoulders. And, and and right right now, for example, like to, to be brutally honest, you and your your followers here, you guys have been incredibly nice and compassionate to me, right? So it's very easy for me to be relaxed and to be comfortable talking mm-hmm. talking to you guys. Um, whereas you know, so you know, like right now, like. I, it, it's very easy for me to be relaxed uh, with the subject, you know, but uh, say, for example, I, I see someone who's maybe an individual who's maybe kind of acting abnormally and, you know, it, it does make me, un- make me uncomfortable. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it'll, it'll keep happening. That fear will keep finding ways to come back. And when it does come back, either it's going to be in the driver's seat of who Darren gets to be, or you can stop and say, you know what? My Instagram name is peace, kindness, hope. I'm going to lead with that. You know, fear be damned. I get to be peace and I get to be kindness and I get to be hope no matter what. In the face of anything, in the face of any fear, I get to be that person. That's my wish for you. Um, and look, just the same way, you know, it's easy to have this conversation now because you and I sort of got related to each other on the phone yesterday. And because, you know, our people watching this, uh, for the most part, you know, it may have taken a while to get them there, but these people have come to like welcome and accept and love you and like just where you're at. So it's easy to have this conversation. But when you first came onto my radar, I chose to respond compassionately and lovingly and like in a welcoming, inclusive way, not because the circumstances were perfect, right? You presented me with some very difficult circumstances, my friend, but I got to choose. I noticed there was a moment. I want to just let the cat out of the bag right now. There was a moment when I went to your uh, Instagram account and I was looking through the pictures and I saw like, look, there's a lot of like shirtless, like flexing pictures and a lot of like you chopping wood and you doing weighted pull-ups. Who the hell? Anyway, I can't do one. Um, and I'm fit. Like I work out. I just still can't do pull-ups. My first instinct was to want to attack you for your body to be like, oh, you know, you're not all that you know, muscular. Like, my first instinct was to want to hurt you back. And I thought. First of all, A, I cannot try to act like you're like like you don't have it going on. I'll just say it that way. He's he's a handsome guy, he's in great shape. Who am I to say otherwise? But also like I don't want that to be my contribution in the world. Is like, oh yeah, you're gonna hurt me? I can hurt you right back, right? But in that moment, that was my first gut human reaction. Like you hurt me, I wanted to give it back 30 times as bad. But rather than letting that reaction take control, I got to be the author of, here's who I say I get to be no matter what. You can count on me to be compassionate because that's what I'm about. Um, And people didn't get it. When I told people I wanted to have this conversation with you, people were like, you know, leave me. He's a lost cause. Oh, that's too much work, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, don't tell me a human being is a lost cause. You know, if someone wants to tell me that I can't make a difference with you. I'm like, you don't know me like that. You know, you're telling me something's impossible. Great. Now I'm going to do it just to show you up. But I mean, what I'm saying by that is when you first came on to my scene, you weren't presenting me with the perfect circumstances for me to be loving and open and accepting. And yet I showed you that anyway. So I know that you found it easy here to be free and relaxed and open with us because we presented you with, you know, pretty ideal circumstances for that. Um, I got to open the door. One second, one second. I'm going to, I'm going to edit that. Hang on, hang on, hang on. All right. One second, one second. Thanks guys for uh, joining this Instagram live. I'm sorry that we couldn't uh, seem to wrap this up in like 30 minutes. Um, I guess him and I are both someone who likes to speak our mind and kind of 
get a little bit yeah. off track uh, from when we're talking. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was just uh, thanking everyone for uh, being here and apologizing for uh, taking so long. <laughs> are Are you hearing me okay? I'm hearing you perfectly. For t you're apologizing for taking so long for what? Well, I'm I'm just saying like uh, you know it's just uh, something that you know we can get very off off topic uh, talking about and it's something that's very dear to us. So we both you know have put in a lot of information that seemed to take quite a while. So I was just uh, trying to apologize for uh, taking so long, but I'm not necessarily in any rush. Um, I I feel like this was a very uh, very productive uh, discussion for me um, because. You know, it, it it's more. I I think it's more important, and and like you said, it's more important for us to understand where we're both coming from. Because the moment that I can learn to accept you guys, and you know, not be so insecure about uh, people that are different than me, the moment you know the tensions off, and the moment it's easier for me to like live my life and not be so upset. You know, and I think I think as we are in different different. Uh, understandings and we keep on you know pressing against each other and fighting and you know uh arguing with each other i think it's easier for me to be more uh fearful and to be more um insecure so it's very important that people like you and i when we have disagreements, we are very open to listening to each other's opinions because like you and i definitely came from different different walks of life we based we, we definitely had different experiences growing up and a different lifestyle, each of us. And it's not necessarily always going to be that everyone has the same set of beliefs. So seeing as you and I started off with such, such separate beliefs, it was very, very important that we listened and respect each other. Um, and, and that way we could, uh, you know, we could actually see each other from, from your perception, from your point of view. Right. Um, yeah. and, uh, and so I guess, you know, my, my advice to anyone else that has that has trouble with someone who is transphobic and you're having the experience where people are upset and they're uncomfortable, I think the easiest and, and best way to, you know, really connect with these people would be necess would be specifically, uh, you know, talking to them and trying to talk to them about why they feel the way they do and mm -hmm. feeling that they're not necessarily wrong for how they feel. Because if you, you know, if you, if you approach them that way, you might, you might understand that these people have maybe been hurt before. They've maybe been uh, violated and, you know, they, they have, perhaps they have reasons for them to feel the way that they do. So, you know, I, I think, uh, I think it would be helpful. That, I think it would be helpful that regardless if we're someone who's transgender or we're someone who's uh, heterosexual or, or gay or bisexual, uh, whoever we are, I think what's important is that we, wow. we approach people, uh, understanding and open to how they feel, uh, and, and try, try be free to make them feel that they are the one that is right and they have to be like them. Uh, if that, if that, if that makes sense, because like from, from what I've understood here is I've heard you by or i've heard uh people that you deeply care about by telling people that they have to be like me and that they're wrong for how who they are you know and then in the same way someone who's transphobic they're also told that they're wrong for who they are and they shouldn't be like that and i think regardless of us being different i think we still have that ability to coexist with each other in a way that nobody gets hurt and we're comfortable and uh free to be who we are and and you know just just like someone who's transgender there there should be no reason for people to be uncomfortable with them you know and 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 i wish there i i do wish there was a day where uh people and i i am seeing this becoming more more socially accepted where where people uh of of trans community are being more socially accepted and people are learning to be more open to how they feel you know because it you know the 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 real deal breaker for me was you, you had said, you know, these people have a lifestyle and they have, you know, a life that they live that leads them to, uh, you know, making, making choices to have sex changes. This is something that's a very realistic problem for them for a variety of reasons. So it, you know, when I said that it was a realistic problem for me because of what I went through, it kind of gave me new light 
to understand that you know they they feel the way that they feel as well you know if i can feel if i can feel how i feel you know it's very wrong for me to tell them that they can't feel how they feel amen so amen it's such a that i'm so happy to hear that because you know what actually while i'm saying this to you darren i'm going to quickly um close you out and then re-invite you back in because you're frozen and i just i need to say goodbye where we can actually see you because otherwise it feels a little weird so hang on i'm going to let you go and then bring you back um so i'm going to quickly rejoin him but i don't want to say what i was going to say because i really want him to be here for it um i think he's still in the chat so i'm sure he can still hear me i just want him to be uh with us as we're saying it and matthew i'm almost done i'm right with you Okay, thank you. Um, all right, so I've just rejoined. Um, so I'm going to send him a request. There we go. Hopefully that should work. I'm hoping everyone's like ready to rejoin right away rather than like, ugh, thank God I was hoping for a reason to get out of that. Um, so um, also, by the way, as long as, uh, as long as we're here, is that Dan? Oh, that's Dan Warren Castillo. Dan, what I want to say to you is you just said it's not possible for these kind of conversation and whatever. Are you telling a drag queen something's impossible? Can you hear yourself? Are you telling a drag queen something's impossible? Because you know what I say. When you tell a drag queen something's impossible, you've paved the way for them. Um, I, I will counter, hey, welcome back. We're going to close up. But Dan was just saying, you know, that this is all fine and well, but it's not possible for these conversations to always go so well. And I say, bullshit. Who says it's not possible? Make it possible. You be the example. You be the possibility of compassion and understanding and openness. And then be amazed by how it goes. So anyway, um, if anyone's just tuning in, because I'm seeing some, some, um, some people tuning in who weren't already watching the last two and a half hours of this, in, this conversation that was supposed to go 30 minutes, but we're literally just wrapping up. What I want to say in closing is, um, Darren, first of all, thank you so, so, so much for being here and having this conversation. I know I got so much out of it. Um, I hope that you and everyone watching got something out of it. But I also want to say what you just said about where you are now opposed to where you were when we started this conversation, where, what you just said and how you've explained that that is like for you is so wildly different than what I would have tried to make you get from this conversation. It's so different from what I would have tried to put into your brain if I was just gonna try to change your mind. If my intention was to change your mind, get you to see how wrong you are, I would have completely missed your point of view. I would have completely missed what this has all been like for you and what would be most helpful to you. All of that I would have just missed. And I would have basically been like, no, just be better, do better, as if I have some kind of magic wand, you know? So I'm really grateful because believe me, I had an agenda. There was a part of me that's like, I'm going to bring this guy on and I'm going to say all the perfect words. And then at the end, he's going to be like, I'm not transphobic anymore. And and you're going to come to all my shows and blah, blah, blah. But like, I realized how unrealistic that was. And I realized that if I'm going in with an agenda to change you or change your mind, I will fail because who am I to do that? Instead, I'm really glad that I offered you an opportunity to have a conversation with me. And I'm really glad that I chose to listen and get to understand you as much as possible because I now have something I didn't have before we started this conversation. And I just want to thank you for that. Yeah, thank you, Ben. Um, Thank you, everyone who uh, gave me the chance to uh, talk about this. Um, I I, I really, uh, you know, I, I really appreciate that you and I as complete strangers who have quite honestly never met each other before um could could you know grow uh so so much um just for just for a little bit of you know basic communication and, and understanding and 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 love for each other so i i just want to thank you because that really has amazed me um uh, i i do meet a lot of people where i i've had situations where i've tried to uh, extend my beliefs to people and it didn't necessarily work for me and uh, to me it was counterproductive and you know going forward if I could work better with people and work in a way that's you know 
not really blowing up in my face all the time and kind of causing traumas and causing tension between me and people, you know, if I could avoid all that, I would, um, you know, so having this conversation has really proven to me that that's possible. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and imagine what a difference that is going to translate to for the animals, because this is only going to get each of us and hopefully the people watching, it's only going to get us out of the way of whatever is getting in the way of us advocating for the animals, right? Of course. Awesome. Of course. Awesome. And, and each other. And understanding each other. Yeah. Yeah. So. And just enjoying our life a little bit more and enjoying, you know, and enjoying our fellow earthlings, you know, human or non. You just froze again, the video, but I know you can still hear me, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay, good. I hope so I'm going to say. Glam I hope it was a glamorous uh, freeze. <laughs> No, you, it was in the middle of a blink, so your eyes are closed, so it's kind of like, and then he just went to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, not not quite at that yet, but uh, thank you very much. Okay. You know, this this, this is definitely something I'm very interested in and uh, have obviously put a lot of thought into, so uh, this is this is very uh, rewarding and relieving for me to, to have a conversation like this, so thank you guys uh, for, for yeah. joining me and uh, allowing me to be here. And for me, too. It, thank you for showing me that um, I was right to take a chance on someone and that I was right to listen to my heart and say, you know what, I'm going to see if I can get further with compassion than I will with anger. Yeah, of course. And I, I hope people people learn from that as well. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna obviously uh, pretty late here where I am. So uh, I've, uh, okay. I've better wrap this up. So thank you, everyone. One All right. One more time. Uh, good night. Thanks again, Darren. Okay, bye, have a good night. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining. I'm so happy that, that I feel that went so well. I don't know about you. I feel that went really well. Um, I'm really, really moved um, by his willingness to have this conversation and his willingness to discover something in this conversation and his willingness to not like hang on to being right about something or hang on to looking good about something. But his willingness just to be like, hey, you know what? We probably have a lot in common. We are both here for the animals. Let's talk, you know? Um, and I don't think any of that was possible so long as we were both blinded by anger and blinded by our feelings and blinded by our prejudices of each other. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm just really grateful. You know, the whole reason I chose to have this conversation, I talked to him already on the phone yesterday. We only talked for about an hour, but we kind of talked because I'm like, we should probably talk first before we get on the air, um, on air, like we're like on the air or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, but we kind of also, I was like, well, let's not get into that conversation because we should talk about that organically, like in, you know, with, you know, on the broadcast, otherwise it's going to sound like rehashed. But if all they wanted to do was have that conversation with him for me to grow and for him to grow, we would have had that conversation ourselves. The reason I wanted to have this conversation in public is because the whole incident happened in public, right? The whole blow up between him and me and, and my followers, that all happened very publicly. And I feel he deserves a chance publicly to make it right however he wants to make it right. And the reason I wanted to do it for you guys isn't just because I think it's more fair to him and me, um, but I hope if I got anything accomplished today, I hope, and I'm not perfect, and I'm not like the end all be all example of how to do this, but I hope I was able to learn for myself how to exercise my own compassion and how to extend my compassion to someone when I really don't want to. And I hope that watching me learn to do that, because you were watching me learn. You, I, I did not have a formula. I didn't know how this was gonna go. Um, I hope that by watching me and Darren settle our differences amicably and in a way that we learn from each other, I hope you guys have also learned something. And I hope you guys got something of value. I hope it was worth your time. Um, and I really hope that we're all the better for it. Um, and I hope that you will take what you learned today and you will go forward with that and lead with that lead from a place of love and compassion. And, um, you know, the next time you see someone who really gets you all hot and bothered and all mad and all in your feelings, I hope you will understand that on the other side, there might be a person who's hurting 
and that that person is no less deserving of your love and your patience and understanding and compassion, even if they're not giving it to you from the, from the start. No, no person is a lost cause. So, um, yeah, I really hope that uh, everyone got something out of this. And um, thank you again for your time and for your attention. It really means a lot to me that you shared that with me and with Jaren today. So thank you guys again. Um, have a good night. How is Sean's story just joining this now at the end of a two and a half hour long broadcast? Anyway, I'm going to leave it in my share. So if anyone is just joining and didn't see this conversation, I think it was a very valuable conversation. Um, and I hope you guys will go back and watch in my story um, and, and, uh, and watch and uh, take whatever you take from it. Anyway, thank you guys so much. Have a good night. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching! Be sure to subscribe to my channel and ring that bell, girl! If you like this, please like, comment, and share! Also, while you're here, you may as well have a look around, check out my cooking show, my podcast, or learn how you can support my work on Patreon. Thank you! I'm share, bitch!